At Dover, there are always two questions on a driver's mind. Just where exactly is that old monster hiding? And when exactly will he get hungry? The answers are everywhere and anytime. It is the one guarantee at Dover International Speedway, the monster is gonna bite. Welcome to NASCAR Nationwide Series countdown from the track affectionately known as the Monster Mile. So who has what it takes today to tame the beast? So far, so good for Joe Gibbs Racing. It's an all JGR front row with the veteran starting P2. The veteran, by the way, the young Joey Legato. He was bested, though, in qualifying by an even younger teammate, Ryan Truex. And boy, that's a good story. We'll tell you why coming up in just a few. And how about this one? In just his first ever nationwide series race, Ty Dillon, not only did he outqualify his big brother, Austin, but he stuck it in the top three. From the garage to pit road, to the ESPN Pit Studio. Welcome, hi, hello, happy race day. Welcome again to Nationwide Series Countdown. It's a pleasure to have you. I'm Nicole Briscoe alongside the Hall of Famer, Mr. Rusty <laughs> Wallace and Brad Doherty down there on the end. Let's play a little word association. I say Dover, you say. Mm. Awesome. Ooh, I, I, say, I say wicked. Well, it's been awesome and wicked for our two <laughs> leaders in the championship clubhouse this year, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Elliot Sadler. They will start sixth and fifth, or sixth and fourth today. Stenhouse starts fourth. Both have won so far in this series this season. Both have had their moments this season. For Stenhouse, his moment was last weekend in Charlotte. He'd been running third until a broken drive shaft resulted in his worst finish of the season, a 26. And that 34-point lead he had going into the race was cut to just 13. So Stenhouse has won three times this year. Sadler has won twice. Both have nine top tens in 11 races. And keep in mind, we're 11 races into the season, and I personally am exhausted by their championship <laughs> battle back and forth. That said, there is a difference between these two. And, Rusty, it has to do with teammates. One has them, the other one doesn't. Now, Ricky Stenhouse doesn't have a teammate, and in my opinion, it's a good thing. They're putting 100% focus on Ricky Stenhouse. Look, the guy's last year's champion. He's got a lot of knowledge out there. There's no doubt well, about that. When they had a finally had when they had to shut some awesome. teams down because of lack of sponsorship, Jack Roush kept all the good guys, put them over to the sixth car, and he's got a solid team. And in my opinion, he's really focused. They're focused on him. He's the type of guy that doesn't need a teammate right now because, let's face it, he was a champion last year. But he doesn't have anyone to lean on. Yeah, I see. That's what I think. I, this is what I, I think he needs a teammate simply because I like the competition within the camp. And when he had Trevor Bain there on a weekly uh, basis, it seemed like it pushed him a little bit harder. When you don't have that person to fall back or lean against or get data from, it doesn't seem to drive you. Elliot Sadler is a great example of that. He's got great teammate in Austin mm -hmm. Dillon, who's a very talented young man. And I think he gets the best out of Elliot because the competition is in-house, not just the other field. Well, you said in-house competition, but the interesting thing with Sadler is not only is his teammate also fighting for the championship, Austin Dillon's third in points, but he's yeah. also the grandson of the boss, so maybe that could be a bit tricky, too? Well, it could be a bit tricky. I mean, obviously, I mean, it's blood, right? There, Richard Charles yeah. wants to help his own kids over there, you know, run better. There's no doubt about that, but let's talk about Elliot. I mean, I have watched Elliot's car this year look better, perform better. I really like what's happened there. Look, no knock against Kevin Harvick Racing last year. But it's obvious, when Kevin sold his team to Richard Childers, they moved it over to the big shop at Richard's place. The cars look better, they're a little bit faster, they look better prepared, and Elliot has been driving the wheels off it. So I think him moving over to RCR has really elevated his game and made him just a little bit better yet. Well, that's absolutely right. It takes a lot of the excuses out of the process simply because you know that young Dylan's car is going to be the best when it comes out of Pop Pop Shop. So Elliot has an opportunity also to gain from some of those pieces and parts. So now there's no excuses. He has to go out and perform because if he's getting beat on a weekly basis by his young counterpart, it doesn't look too good on the Yeah, veteran. but don't be no surprised if Ricky Stenhouse beats him because I really think in this series, as much money as it costs and yeah. the funds are light, you can't get spread too thin. And I think with Roush putting all that money and talent into Ricky Stenhouse, in my opinion, I'm going to fight you for it, man. I don't know. It's I hard to disagree with Stenhouse a Hall of Famer now. Guy, man. It's I hard do. to disagree with a Hall of Famer. How about we I stop agree. talking about them and actually talk to them? Talk who you got. Yeah, don't ask us. Ask them. <laughs> 
All right, let's check in with Elliot Sadler, who is the lead dog of the RCR three-car stable. Elliot, let's talk some X's and O's here. The new Goodyear tire you guys have here uh, has incredible amounts of grip, but not much wear, not much give up. How does that impact your race strategy today? Well, we really don't know what it's going to do once it rubbers down the racetrack, but with the fall off that we saw yesterday, it has really made this race a track position race. Uh, clean air we saw was big in the trucks yesterday, and we're going to try to keep that in the back of our mind as we get down towards the end of the race, but really, we don't know how how this this tire lays rubber and rusty can attest this track changes so much from the green flag to the checkered flag we just kind of got to wait and see what this new tire what it does coming out of charlotte just 13 points separating you and ricky stenhouse uh, how much are you aware or how much do you care what's going on with the six car during a race like today well when they have issues like they had at charlotte we're definitely aware of what's going on and we want to try to capitalize on that as much as we can but as far as racing head to head we really just want to race our race we're not trying to monitor those guys and see where they're doing we want to win races and we want to get to victory lane because we know at the end of the day that's the best way um to try to win a championship and that's the most fun you can have when, when you're trying to collect that hardware but when things happen i think to both teams i think they're aware of what we're doing and we definitely pay attention uh to what's happening at the end if some if something happens like it did last week hey thanks for your time and good luck today i appreciate it thanks doc let's hear from ricky Sunhouse. here's uh, shannon spake well doc walking around the garage the last two days the six team a little bit busy they were thrashing, fixing that car up. Why? Because <laughs> it wasn't driving very good. Um, you know, we didn't have the speed that we wanted, um, you know, when we unloaded here with our Cargill Beef Mustang. But uh, Mike, Seth, all the guys worked really hard. We changed everything in practice except the driver. So I was messing around with Jack saying I, I hoped he didn't change the driver next. But, um, you know, after practice between qualifying, we changed some more stuff. And, you know, I think it was probably a, a list of 10 things that we've changed uh, since, quali uh, since practice to qualifying. Qualified a little bit better, starting fourth. Um, so I think we're optimistic about today. Uh, you know, the rain washing the rubber off changed a little bit. So we're going to have track, you know, conditions changing here, left and right. So we're going to have to stay up on it. Uh, I'm going to have to give great feedback to Mike Kelly and Seth and make sure that they uh, have all the information they need to, to make the right adjustments. So it should be a fun day. Ricky Stenhouse looking for that points lead. 13 points separate he and Elliot Sadler as of right now. Nicole, so we'll definitely have to watch those two today. But here is another driver to watch. The pole sitter, the hometown driver who is 11 days removed from having his appendix removed. Ooh. Ryan Truex is standing by with Mike Massaro. And he's got lots of reasons to be happy, Nicole. Not only is his appendix healing up, but he's on the pole at his home track right alongside your teammate Joey Logano. How do you and Joey plan to attack the opening laps today? Well, he's been kind of getting on me for stealing his pole, he said. So um, I'm just going to run away from him, hopefully. That's the plan. Um, you know, the race is 200 laps, 200 miles. So you got to be there at the end. And, uh, you know, if that means giving up a spot 10 laps into the race, so be it. Um, we just want to be there at the end. we got a really good long run car. Uh, we're really good in race trim. So got to thank them. You know, Matt Lucas, everyone on the team, everyone back at Joe Gibbs Racing. They gave me such a good car. Grind Boss, obviously, for stepping up and sponsoring me um, it's tough it's tough being on a part-time schedule but we can go out and get a pole like this and have a good as car as we we got here um, you know it really shows what we can do if we could run full-time so doing all we can and hopefully we can get some more races out of this well, good luck this afternoon thank you lots of history here for the truex family nicole after all his brother martin has a cup win and two nationwide victories here in dover yep in fact uh ryan said earlier this week if the appendix had sidelined him martin was going to race this race and he's like uh uh you already have a win here it's my turn now there's, there's no way in the world a driver wants to give something up to his brother to uh -uh. drive i mean this guy was going to heal up no doubt about it but I'll tell you what, guys, uh, I am not surprised that Martin or Ryan Truex is on the pole for this particular race. This guy is really, really good. You mentioned earlier that this is his home racetrack. I'm telling you what, when a driver comes to his home racetrack, he definitely wants to shine. And for Martin, or for Ryan, I'm sorry, yep. this is his Daytona 500. He loves this track. So they did the right thing bringing him here. Yeah, without question. I mean, we saw Ryan Truex uh, jump into the Nationwide Series a couple years ago with Michael Waltrip racing. He ran Joe Gibbs cars last year. This young man is very, very talented. I'm really surprised that he's not in this series full time because he is a wheel man. And I would not be surprised if he can get the car throughout the day that he doesn't go to Victory Lane here today. Well, fans, this is something for you. Race Buddy enhanced coverage for a couple of our Nationwide Series races. Log on to NASCARNationwideSeries.com slash race buddy and coming up next kurt bush is one of the few cup drivers in this field today he's driving for his brother kyle and that is certainly an interesting relationship two brothers two drivers one boss why it works 
at least right look, now. Look, look, dude got the monster gear how on. How cute is that? I wonder how much weight I'd lose it. if I had my pendant. You need to stop eating. <laughs> NASCAR Nationwide Series Countdown is brought to you by Sleep In. Dream better here. Book now at sleepin.com. No matter what the sport, there is no greater ally or rival than a brother. Someone who has your back when the going gets tough, but certainly won't make it any easier on you if it comes down to you and him. There is no brotherly competition today, although I think that little man can give him a run for his money. Checked the out. Brothers Bush are on the same team. Kurt driving for his little brother in the 54 car. Kurt will start ninth. And so far, this is a driver-owner relationship that is working. But why? Here's Marty Smith. It seems like you have much in common fundamentally. You do the same thing, you share the same last name. How much do you really have in common? Nothing. He's a little brother. He's six years behind me. <laughs> yeah. When you're 11 and 18, you're really far apart in age. We're still six years apart, but when you're 33 and 27, it's that much easier to be on the same page. It's well documented that it wasn't always wonderful between the two of you. Describe that for me. Why? There's always been that working relationship that we've always had, but there's a moment in Charlotte that uh, we're racing for a million bucks. Here comes his brother Kyle to the inside. We had dollar signs in our eyes. <laughs> Got together and didn't see eye to eye on the incident. That was a bummer to have my little brother pull that move on me. And then it just snowballed into, oh, the brothers don't get along. One thing that you said to me is that you'd spent considerable time trying to outrun some of his mistakes. How has that impacted you? I think it was the Jimmy Spencer thing, you know, him and Jimmy are having a battle. Kurt continuing to express his displeasure at Jimmy Spencer. That was the same time that I came into the Nationwide Series. I got booed my first race. You know, it's like, wait a second, what did I do? Guilt by association. Yeah, like, my name's not Kurt, you know, just chill out for a second, give me a chance here. So I never really got a chance. Um, and I think those are kind of some of the things that most frustrate you. How would you describe this year so far? This has been a fun project. To be part of the, the beginning stages of Kyle's dream, this is the most eye-to-eye -eye I've ever seen with an owner. And it's, uh, it's an amazing feel to do it as family together. I think it's, I mean, to me it's been fun. Uh, it's also been challenging, difficult, frustrating. Why? We're held to a different standard. The scrutiny for us is going to be different. And if there's not wins or a top five, why? Why, is, why are the expectations different for you guys? Because we're the Bush brothers. For us, if there's not a W, then there's a problem. How did that happen? Because of your success? I think because of both of our success. Yeah, he's the know? most winningest driver in nationwide. Most winningest driver nationwide, cup champion. You know, we're expected to be able to make anything, whether it's a jalopy, be able to go around there and win a race, you know? And um, I think that's part of the expectations sometimes, which is fine. We've just got to know to work with that. The first couple months, it was like, man, what are we doing? Are we going to be able to get through this? Are we going to be able to win ever? Hamlin's got the bottom of the racetrack. He drives to the inside of Kurt Busch. They are nose to nose as they hit for the checker. Hamlin sliding it sideways. Oh, Give it to Kurt wow. Busch. Woo! Kurt winning that race just took a whole different load off. I'm so yeah, proud yeah. of you. You're proud of me? Now you all right as yeah. a driver? You know, if it was somebody else, it probably would have just been like, oh, cool, we won, you know? But it was him, he won, and was able to share that moment. Victory Lane was cool. That genuine, wow, we did this. It was a magical feeling. Something I hadn't felt in a long while. How would you describe your relationship? I'd say this is the best it's ever been. <laughs> yeah. It's all timing. I mean, it's how you make or break a certain situation, and I'm a believer in things happen for a reason. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that last statement. I think sometimes just things happen for a reason. Okay, so Kurt says, and I quote, we are held to a different standard. Do you agree to me? Yes, I do, and I'll tell you what, it's not because of the incidents that has happened throughout their careers and history. It's because of what they said. They are very, very extraordinary race car drivers. 
Kyle Busch has won a ton of nationwide races. Kurt Busch is a champion. Both of these guys have won at the highest level. So when we see these guys get in a race car, you think that they're going to win automatically. So there is a, a different level there, even though they're building a team. So they're held to this level because of their talent. Without question. Okay. That's what he meant. I think that's what he meant 100%. They're both controversial. They're both okay. rough around the edges, but they're both bullet fast. And I do expect them to win in that nationwide car for sure. Those talented drivers like they got, they got the engines, they got the power, they got all the stuff now. They didn't have power earlier, I didn't think, mm -hmm. but now they got it now, I think. They should win, and so they're held to a little bit different standard. Kurt has actually only raced here once in the Nationwide Series. Do not mistake that for lack of experience. Remember, he won here in the Cup Series the last time we were here in the fall, and experience tends to matter at this track. Experience is everything in the world here. This You have to know what's coming to you. You can't just show up and not know, hey, this track's going to get tight or it's going to get loose. You need to know what's going to happen. You need to know that turn two is really going to jump all over you as the race gets going on. Or turn four is a track where you have a lot of wrecks and spins. I mean, let's take a lap around this track. I mean, you exit the turn here off, off of turn four. You're right up against the wall. You're coming down this straightaway. You're going to fall off a cliff going into turn one. You land. You can see what I'm getting at. The track's totally different. So experience is very, very important. You're going to exit the corner. And here's that wall right again. You'll see I'm wrecking all day long. And if you do wreck, you're going to slide to the bottom of the racetrack and cream into the inside wall. You got to be experienced to know how to get away from all that stuff. Yeah, you, you, I mean the the corners are almost 10 feet wider than the straightaways. So on a restart here, you're trying to get to the bottom of the track as you get through turn one, simply because you're going to land that race car and pull up up in front of the guy in front of you. As you see right here, the car on the bottom is trying his best to hold himself in that line. The car on the outside slides by. You have to be able to get in line, though, once you get through turn two and you get back to turn four, simply because there's not enough room to get out the straightaway. Experience the key word. Brad Keselowski won here in May of 2009. He is the only non-cup driver to win at Dover in the last 13 races here. Here's the other thing. It's a shorter track, only a mile but it has some big wrecks. Oh, it has some massive wrecks. And when you wreck here, it's like you're wrecking a Daytona or Talladega. And oh, look man. at them coming into pit road. They yeah. can't even get off pit road right. This happens all the time. We've seen some massive wrecks on pit road. It's so tight. Take a look at this. I believe this was Tony Stewart trying to get on pit road. Ryan Newman spinning out, coming at pit road. Well, you come down a straightaway, and it's almost nine, almost 10 degrees of banking. And as you drop look down into the air, yeah, Watch you this. just go flat. It's Matt Kenseth. Watch him hit this barrier. Boom. It's just so difficult to get the car woed down because you lose your bearing once you get down on the apron. And on the track, I mean, there's a lot of spinning. And when you spin and hit the wall, you always slide down the banking. Look at Man. that. Unbelievable. I, I really wish our fans could come and stand on this apron and realize how high that top groove is above your head. It's almost eight, nine feet above your head. And the other Ooh. thing is, not only is it, we mentioned pit road earlier. It tends to be tricky when it comes to speeding on pit road. There were seven pit road speeding violations yesterday in the truck race. There have been 51 speeding penalties handed out here since 2007. That is far and away the most of any other truck. Yeah, that, absolutely. That is totally crazy. Now, I talked to Joe Ballas today in a meeting we had with NASCAR. I said, where are all these violations happening at? Where at on the racetrack? He said, Rusty, the very last segment, almost all of them. It's kind of tricky. The drivers leave pit road to get down and they gas it just a little bit. Bam, they get busted right there. So the very end of pit road is where they got to watch it. So you're, we're, we're working over there. I see you rearranging some papers because you got, this is your job now. You, you, you have some expertise in the NBA. You're I will Bob allow you, you to, uh, you take right, it away. You ready for this? Uh -huh. Here we go. <laughs> the NBA on ESPN continues tomorrow night with game four of the Eastern Conference Finals. It all starts with the Kia NBA Countdown Show at 7.30, which is an excellent Listen show, by the way. Listen to his announcer voice. Listen to this now. All right, so <laughs> we've got Paul Pierce and the Celtics at 8.30 Eastern taking on LeBron James and the officials. The Eastern Conference Finals tomorrow on ESPN, ESPN3, also live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. What are those cats like the officials a little bit, huh? Get a little the political NBA, there. Horrible. 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 When we come back to this show, the rookies and the youngins in the field today from a driver making his first ever nationwide series start. That would be Ty Dillon to the young drivers who A, need to find better luck and B, are hoping to start churning out some better results. That is when we come back. I'll tell you what, Kyle Busch is an excellent chassis guy. Understand yeah. race car better than anyone. That was random. You know, <laughs> I'll throw that in. Coaches fight a lot. <laughs> 
Welcome back to the Monster Mile. Today is a big day for the Dillon family. Austin Dillon is making his first ever Dover start in the Nationwide Series. Of course, he's third in points, only 28 behind Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He will roll off 11th today. Get this, eight spots behind the other Dillon in the field. That would be <laughs> little brother Ty Dillon. Dave Burns, that is also bragging rights. Well, I don't know. Big Brother's coming over here. I don't know if they had something to, uh, oh, more pictures with the family. This has been a big weekend for the Dillon family. Uh, you've had a lot of support. You've got great equipment to drive. And you raced yesterday, so you know the track. What's been most challenging for you in your first nationwide weekend so far? Um, just getting used to these nationwide insurance cars. They're, um, they're, they're very fast compared to a truck um, on the end of a straightaway, so you have to roll off the throttle a little bit more. Um, but my truck and the nationwide car really relate over each other really well, so I think that's, that uh, conveyed to a little bit of our success in, in qualifying. But uh, got to thank South Point Casino and, and Brendan Gaughan and everybody for letting me jump in this, this car last minute and um, have this opportunity. And, and Ernie Cope and all these guys for working so hard and believing in me. So going to have some fun, get some experience, and um, learn a little bit for these nationwide cars. We'll keep our eye on Ty Dillon in the 33 today. Dr. Jerry Punch? Well, Dave, arguably no one has had better runs, worse finishes, and horrible luck than this guy, Brian Scott, this year. And, Brian, uh, but a great qualifying effort. What's the key to turning this year around today? Well, you pretty much summed up our year. We've had really fast Dollar General Toyotas all year. Guys have worked hard, brought fast race cars to the racetrack, and here at Dover, it's no different. Uh, you know, we can't really do anything different. We just uh, got to qualify good, keep ourselves out of bad positions on the racetrack, and uh, just not get caught up in messes. I, I had a good talk with Ricky Stenhouse earlier, and, uh, you know, he just told me, he goes, you know, everybody asked me all the time what I changed a couple years back to uh, quit getting in wrecks and stuff, and he goes, I didn't change anything. I still drive hard. He goes, it just turns around. So. Uh, I'm hanging my hat on that. I just want things to turn around and uh, start bringing this, this car home with the finishes it de deserves. Well, good luck today. A good starting spot, fifth for Brian Scott. Nicole? Yeah, but listen to this. So he's got five DNFs and 11 starts, three of them for crashes, two for mechanical issues. His average running position when those incidents have happened, better than 10th. I mean, this is just well, look, he, he can drive the car. There's yeah. no doubt about that. He's fast. He pays attention. But he's got himself in many, many accidents. Some of his own doing. A lot of them not of his own doing. But look, he's frustrated. He needs to get his head screwed back on straight, focus, and get back after it. Real quick, who do you like? You've got Cup Light with two drivers or the rest of the field. Are you taking the two or the 41? I'm taking the rest of the field. I like the numbers. I'm taking the 41. Who do you like particularly? Ricky Stenhouse wins the day, baby. Yeah. All he right. Back. When we come back, we'll find Bounce out if the back. random one is actually right. 200 laps, 200 miles from Dover. Don't go anywhere. The most unique facility in American motorsports, the Dover International Speedway, built with a horse racing track inside it, a casino alongside it, and banking on the track itself that it makes it difficult and demanding on both car and driver. 200 miles ahead for the NASCAR Nationwide Series today on the Monster Mile, the command to start engines just a short time away. I'm Alan Bestbrook. Welcome to our coverage from Dover. 12 of the last 13 times the Nationwide Series has raced on the Monster Mile. It's been a Sprint Cup driver taking home the trophy, but only two of those Cup drivers are entered in this race. It's a great chance for one of these young drivers to steal some spotlight by taking home a very hard-earned trophy. To reset the top stories of today's race, we go to Pit Road and Shannon Spake. Well, Alan, last week it took the 16 just 13 minutes to fix the broken drive shaft and get Ricky Stenhouse Jr., your points leader, back out onto the racetrack. And sure, Mike Kelly said that they lost 21 points because of where they finished, but he said the main key is the fact that they gained seven points by getting back out onto that racetrack and finishing the race. He spoke to his guys today. He told them they did a great job. They can always do better, and they will be certainly ready for anything that comes their way today. Alan? All right, Shannon, thanks. So that uh, the lead story where the championship is concerned as we get ready to go 200 miles in Dover. First, trackside for the opening ceremony. Race fans, please rise and remain standing. Presenting today's national colors are the Dover Air Force Base Honor Guard. And delivering today's invocation from Dover Air Force Base, the Air Force Base Chaplain, Captain Josh Rumsey. Heavenly Father, I pray for the safety of everyone here today, both competitors and spectators. May we have the strength to compete to the best of our ability, the courage to confront misbehavior, and the perspective to remember what matters most in the end. Remind us, a good name is better than great wealth or even winning. 
It's in the most precious and holy name of God's only Son that we pray. Amen. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome Ashley Forrest, who just released her new single, Eyes Wide Open. Oh, broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly So we're getting ready to race in Dover, a community with a big military tradition. Dover Air Force Base just up the street providing that flyover. Do Dover also a community with a big racing tradition. And the 57th NASCAR Nationwide Series race in Delaware's capital city is about to begin. NASCAR Nationwide Series at Dover is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Call now to get a quote. Delaware, the first state, first to ratify the Constitution of the United States. Today, someone's going to be first. The first NASCAR Nationwide Series driver to the checkered flag after 200 miles on the Monster Mile. Engines will fire up shortly here in Dover. Hall of Famer and three-time Dover winner Rusty Wallace has made the move up to the broadcast booth to join myself and three-time Dover winner and champion crew chief Andy Petrie. This racetrack is rough. It's tough. And yet, Rusty, a lot of drivers will tell you it's one of their favorites. Why? It's a lot of fun, number one. You get to attack this racetrack. A lot of tracks have problems with design flaws, stuff like that. Not this track. It's really straightforward. In order to run fast here, you've got to get up on a wheel and drive hard. And drivers like that. They just love being able to attack this track, run this concrete. Andy, this is one of the most favorite places I ever ran at, and those are the reasons why. Yeah, but it's one of these tracks that you get in trouble really quick. There's a lot of rookies in this field. And also, there, there's not very many former winners in this field as well. So somebody's going to have a good chance to get that first win. But also think that you're going to see some more cautions and, and potential problems on the track because when you do make a mistake, even a small mistake here can turn into a big mistake because the track is so narrow, nowhere to go if somebody gets in trouble. So just two drivers in the top 35 in Sprint Cup points in this field. They are Joey Logano and Kurt Busch. Touched on this briefly downstairs. I'm going to flush it out a little bit more here. If I can have you pick Logano and Busch, or one of the other 41 in the field to win today, who's it going to be? I'm going to pick Joey Logano. He's a young guy, but he's run good here before. Logano's the guy I'm picking. I like the numbers, man. I'm taking the field, okay. but I th the number <laughs> I like in the field are the two up top, the two numbers up top, the two and the six with Elliot Sadler and Ricky Stenhouse. Guys, uh, both uh, who have uh, some wins already this season and a chance to get another one here at the Monster Mile today. What makes this track different from the others, the transition from straightaway into corner and from corner back on to straightaway. There's no other track on the circuit where the cars, when you're standing on pit road, are above your head on the racetrack, and then the driver drops down off that hill into the corner. It's so punishing to the car and to the driver. A lot of elevation changes, like you just said. Add to that, this is a solid concrete racetrack. Some drivers like it, some hate it. I personally liked it, but it's got a lot of different feel than other tracks because of all those transitions. When you go down to turn one, Alan, it's like you're falling off a cliff. 
you bomb down to that turn one, you don't have that feel anywhere else. And the track narrows up off these corners. The corners are pretty wide, but it narrows up so much on the straightaway, and there's limited vision there. And then, like you said, there's big G forces in the corner, not just to the side, but also down in the seat. A lot of positive Gs. It's a tough place uh, all around. It's a tough place for 200 miles, let alone the 400. The Sprint Cup Series will run tomorrow. And for these drivers climbing behind the wheel, a couple of unknowns that will factor into their day. Slightly different tire that Goodyear has brought here. More on that in just a minute. And track conditions that have changed. All the practice for the Nationwide Series was held yesterday. These drivers had two laps on the track today. There are two laps of qualifying earlier. Since then, the Sprint Cup cars have been out and qualified. The rubber conditions on this concrete surface are a little bit different. And we'll see how it all plays into the inside lane, outside lane, side-by-side -side start when they wave the green flag. Before they can turn them loose under that green flag, we need to hear some very important words. And now to set today's field into motion, I present to you Risa McGuire, Vice President of Sales for Five Hour Energy, and Chad Clark, Director of Sports Marketing for Five Hour Energy. Drivers, are you ready to kick this monster's butt? If so, fire your engines! Bring it up. Done with some energy, for sure. And the engines have fired here at the Monster Mile. Fans, remember to check out Race Buddy, enhanced coverage for select nationwide series races with more cameras than ever. Log on to NASCARNationwideSeries.com slash Race Buddy. When the field rolls off in a minute, we're going to talk to our ESPN in-race reporter for the day. He is the Illinois native Justin Allgaier, a two-time winner in the Nationwide Series, sixth in the championship starting today. He starts seventh, and he talks with us next. The Dover International Speedway, NASCAR's one-mile, high-speed, high-bank, white nightmare. Oh, and the car's upside down. Every lap presents an opportunity to make a big move. But every corner presents another chance for disaster. He drove straight across the damn racetrack. So fire those engines and proceed with caution. Whoa, whoa, look out. It's time to unleash the monster. The question is, on which driver or drivers will the monster unleash its wrath on? As the NASCAR Nationwide Series rolls out onto the Monster Mile for 200 laps on this very difficult racetrack. If I added right, Andy, 200 laps on a one-mile track is... Hey, that's good, huh? Yeah, 200 miles. That's sharp. A very slow pit road speed, 35 miles an hour. Four sets of tires for the teams to change today. They won't use them all. More on that in a minute. And as you look at... The width of this racetrack, just 48 feet on the straightaways, doesn't offer a lot of room with that inside wall there if you get in trouble. I tell you what, you hit, you hit trouble, you go down, you hit that out inside wall, and you fly back up and hit the outside wall. It's like playing on a pinball machine. You get beat up pretty bad there. Except you don't get any bonus points <laughs> for opening the gate. All right, our ESPN in-race reporter today is Justin Allgaier, two-time winner on the NASCAR Nationwide Series. who would love to get back to victory lane today. Justin, Rusty Wallace up in the ESPN booth. You got us? Second gear. Hey, Justin, Rusty up here in the ESPN booth. You got us? Loud and clear, Rusty. Go ahead. Okay, we've got an ESPN mailbag question that comes from Savannah in Richmond, Virginia. The question is, as challenging as this track is, why, it is so, why is it so favored to most all the drivers? Say that again there, Rusty. You broke up on me, bud. As challenging as this track is, why is it a favorite for so many drivers? I think that's an easy question there. Uh, this racetrack's just so fast and has so much speed to it. Uh, you drive into these corners, and you, the, the sensation of dropping in uh, to turn one here is just amazing. So um, hopefully we got our, our Brant Chevy primed up. Uh, that was one of the things we worked on yesterday was corner entry. It's going to be slick today, uh, and uh, should be a good race. All right, buddy. Well, you had practice the other day, and your car looked pretty good in practice. But since then, we've had a lot of rain. And this track is awful green right now. You got any concerns about how your car is going to handle early in the going? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, the track has obviously got a lot less rubber on it. And it's hotter than it was when we practiced yesterday. So, uh, you know, we're going to use this first run before the competition caution to get uh, everything peeled out. Make sure uh, 
that we're, we're where we want to be at. But like you said, the car was really, really good the other day. And I feel like uh, we got a branch Chevy that could possibly get in the victory lane today. All right, buddy, thanks for talking to us and have a great race. Now Andy's going to speak to your crew chief, Jimmy Ellich. Four, thank you. Hey, Jimmy, Andy Petrie up here in the booth. The consensus has been uh, the track's really going to change as this race goes on. Which way do you expect it to go for your car, and how do you expect to, or what kind of changes do you expect to make to uh, comp compensate? Yeah, with the rain washing the rubber way, I do think that it's going to be a little bit free here in the beginning, you know, until the thing rubbers up. And then after that competition yellow, I think you can start to get a read on what the racetrack is going to be like. And I think we're going to probably have to free it up as the day goes on, as the rubber gets into it. But... You know, watching the truck race last night, our truck seemed to, uh, all the Turner trucks seemed to get a little bit freer as it got rubber. So we'll just have to wait and see, be ready to go either way. All right, man, turn those screws the right way. Good luck. Thanks for talking to us. And Justin Allgaier's front tire carrier, Matt Holtzbauer from New Egypt, New Jersey. I guess this will be his home track, too, is going to carry our over-the-wall camera today. Matt, good luck. Have a safe race. Thanks. Look at the high-definition onboard cameras to help us with our Dover broadcast today. Austin Dillon with the American Ethanol camera. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the Ford EcoBoost on board. Danica Patrick's GoDaddy.com camera. Sam Hornish Jr., the Dodge on board. Ryan Truex, the Nationwide Insurance camera. Justin Allgaier with the Goodyear on board. It is Ty Dillon with the Chevy on board and Cole with the clean Cole on board. Cole dropping to the back of the field from 19th spot on approved adjustments. From Pit Road before the green, Dave Burns. Alan, can Ryan Truex win at a track called the Monster just 11 days after emergency appendectomy? He starts on pole today. Mike Massaro? Danica Patrick's last and only time here at the Monster Mile in a nationwide car was September 2010. More than a year and a half ago, she spent the entire weekend relearning the racetrack. She set modest goals for today, saying a top 15 finish would be successful, Alan. All right, thanks. Competition caution coming at lap 40 because of the overnight rain. New tire that Goodyear has brought here. We'll talk about that as the race gets underway. But first, coming to the green, Ryan Truex, Joey Logano, the Joe Gibbs Racing teammates bring the field down for the start. Lap one. Looks like Ryan Trix got a pretty good start right through Allen, but Legato was on his game, and he really needed to get in front of Legato a little bit farther than he did get down to turn one. That outside lane took over, and Legato is just checking out right now. Yeah, it looked like he might get clear, Legato, but not quite, and Legato took advantage of it. Stenhouse to second. Ryan Truex to third, side by side for fourth. Two, Elliott Sadler, 33, Ty Dillon. A pair of teammates right there, side by side right now. Pretty new run oh. here for D Dillon. He gets in the ball just a little bit, guys. Well, that turn two wall will jump up and bite you, one of It will, Andy. When you get on the outside, there's not much grip up there. You're carrying a lot of speed at this racetrack, and you've got to be wide open in the center of this corner. Trouble run fast. 08 car. Caution out. Paper coming, just so come on down. Come on down. We get the pin. Tim Andrews looking like he's got a, uh, a lot of damage on yeah, the right side of hard, that car. Hard lick. This track is so unforgiving. See that right front tire is already flat in that car. I don't know if that happened when he hit the wall or that's what's caused him to hit the wall. All right. First caution out. Just four laps into the race. Look at a couple things here. Yeah, Ty Dillon just getting a, carrying a little extra speed, and the track's not quite cleaned off up top. Not much contact, though. And now the 08 of Tim Andrews. Yeah, he's got a problem getting in the corner already. It looked like the right front went down. Yeah, that right front air dam was laying on the ground, entering a corner, so I'd say he already blew that right front tire, and then he getting in the wall. It wasn't his fault. Yeah, and as early as it was in the, in the run, you got to think it was something on the car rubbing that tire or ran over something. Tough break either way. You know, you, you might you just wonder a little bit, at least I do, when Ty got in that wall off the corner, that he laid any debris down. And look at him, he's so frustrated, Tim is. 
He wanted this race so bad. Yeah, just to be sitting four laps in already out. That's Imagine. got to be frustrating. He's a young driver with a lot of talent. He just needs to showcase his talent. And he can't do it now. He's in the garage area. Caution out early in the going. In Dover in the five hour energy 200. Back at the five hour energy 200 at Dover. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. Information I'll give you here is that Joey Logano has chosen the outside lane for the restart with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to his inside. Well, I'm not going to say that Logano jumped the restart, but he did a good job getting through the gearbox. <laughs> yeah, he got a good start. And if there's any question whether starting on the outside was the right thing to do or wrong thing to do, he fixed it by getting through that gearbox into turn one first. Second spot, Ty Dillon, 33, working on Stenhouse in the six, and there's Kurt Busch in the 54. We talked about Kurt Busch early in our broadcast Whoa. and countdown about how bad these brothers want to make this new team run. This is a track that Kurt really likes. He's won the cup race here last year, this particular race. He's being aggressive right now, early in this race. Yeah, especially around a couple of rookie drivers, not a lot of experience. Kurt's not afraid to mix it up with them, though. It's for fourth place, Ryan Truex on the outside. They're not afraid to mix it up with him either, are they? No, they're not, I'll tell you. Pretty early in the race right now, only 10 laps into this thing. The good thing these drivers got coming forward is lap 40, that competition caution because of all the rain. So if there's some cars not handling good right now, Andy, at least they can come in and get them tuned up then. Yeah, that's a good thing. And you can run the car hard. You know you're going to only run 40 laps. You can run it hard, not worry about tire wear. Really expose any issues you might have with your car so you can get those adjustments made during that stop. Top two have separated themselves from this group, racing for third. You know, you know, there's one Whoa, driver I'm telling you. Yeah, 54 in the wall of bit. I started to say one driver I really want to see how she does is Danica Patrick at this racetrack. We talked earlier how this is a very, very physically demanded racetrack. The exits turn two and four, a hard drive. How can Danica do today, Andy? That's what I'm looking at. Well, she's hanging in there. She's just ahead of Michael Annette in that 43 car. See, she's struggling just a little bit up off the corner. Allows Annette to get the inside groove on on uh, the seven car for position. I talked to a lot of the IndyCar drivers that she used to compete against. They told me that Rusty, when her car is not right, she tends to slow down a little bit. This lady very seldom crashes just all by herself. If the car is not handling, she'll work on it. And I've been seeing her do this a lot, especially at Darlington, South Carolina, about three weeks ago when she had a great run, finished 12th over there. And she's been proving a lot of people wrong about how long it would take her to get going. Prove me wrong. That is a busy steering wheel inside yeah, of that Yeah, you can see just how physically corner. demanding it is. I mean, she's having to really wrestle that car. Our in-race reporter, Justin Allgaier, running for ninth spot there with Brian Scott in the 11. Scott has high hopes for this race today. We documented in Countdown the rough season that he's had so far, but he has a win in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series at this track, considers it one of his best. You know, it's on his mind, the problems he's had this year, all the crashing. In fact, he told us in Countdown that he went and actually talked to Ricky Stenhouse, and Ricky said, hey, look, man, I didn't really change anything. I just kind of got it out of my system because, what was it, like 20 races? Ricky wrecked like Andy 15 times or something crazy like that? Well, he may not have changed anything, but he learned a lot. Yeah. I'll tell you, he learned a lot through, through all that. That experience has really paid off, and uh, I don't think he slowed down. I think that's what he's saying. He didn't slow down and make an adjustment. I think he just learned how to control the car a little better in different situations. How impressive is it that Ty Dillon, in his first ever drive in a Nationwide Series car, and I know he's, look, he's the ARCA Series champion. He's got experience on this racetrack in the Camping World Truck Series. Grin yesterday, but how impressive is it that he's up here running in third spot, even just in the early going? And this is a tough racetrack. You come to a track for your first Nationwide race, you come to Dover, qualify third, and here he is running in the top six. 
It's good stuff. He and Ryan Truex racing for a spot there, Doc. Indeed they are trying to hold off Truex. Now, the 33 driver, Ty Dillon, getting a lot of input from his spotter, telling him, hey, you're off in the corner too much. Go straight in, dive straight in. You don't want to open up the door. So what he's trying to do is teach him lap by lap here from the early lap not to open the door, Rusty, going in the corner so you don't let the 20 car have a shot to get under it. Yeah, early in the run here, you don't want to do anything wrong and wreck yourself, but you don't want to open the door like they're saying and let somebody drive underneath you. They do have this caution coming to lap 40, so keep himself up in the front. Don't get caught on the bottom because here at this track, Jerry, you can get freight train, we call it. You can get stuck in the top lane and they'll drive right past you on the bottom. You don't want that to happen. Big run for Truex there off of turn two. One thing he's got to be careful of, though, if you're holding up a bunch of cars behind you, they're going to get impatient and move you. You don't want that to happen. You can see now Ty's giving the bottom lane up, and he's still maintaining speed. Let's see if the 54 just follows the 20 car right through, because that's what generally happens, guys. No, oh, that's going to get tight with that left car. No, did the other way, around the outside. Yeah, Truex, big loser on that exchange. Caught the traffic at the wrong time and yep. picked the wrong way to try and go around him. So Truex falls back to fifth, Kurt Busch to fourth, working on Ty Dillon for third. All this going on behind Joey Logano, who says Dover is, quote, one of my favorite tracks to run. I'm a huge fan of this track. He's led all the laps in this one so far. Back at Dover, caution out, huge story. Championship leader Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has crashed on the back straightaway and heavily damaged that Ford. He was running second at the time. Yellow flag out just 27 laps into the event. Boy, this track can humble you in a heartbeat. Like I said, the, it, little mistakes. You just don't get away with them much here. It just gets loose, gets out from under him. And when you, when you, ha when that happens, there's nowhere to go. You're gonna hit something. Mm. You ride along with him here, he just gets loose. It's a classic case to get loose on the X in the corners here, and then bank straightaway puts you right into the inside wall like that. Yellow's out. But can I tell you, that's just a... I would have never dreamed a mistake would have been made like that out of a guy like Ricky Stenhouse, our last year's champion. He's I'll been give bullet you that. fast. That's not the guy I thought would, uh, would have a problem. No. We see so many more drivers in this field with less experience. But it just shows you this track doesn't play favorites. So now this team... We'll do all they can to get this car repaired and back out on the racetrack if they can and try and salvage some points like they did a week ago in Charlotte. Some pit stops. Matt Holzbauer carrying tires for Justin Allgaier. What you don't see is anybody putting fuel in. It's not allowed until that competition caution. So Allgaier will head back out. Caution out, second time in the race. Somewhat of a shocking development as the championship leader running second gets the wall hard on the Monster Mile. After a tremendous start to the season, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. had his first real trouble since Daytona last week at Charlotte when the drive shaft came out of the car. Team made efforts to repair the car, got him back onto the racetrack pretty promptly, and he finished in 26th position. Then earlier today, just a little while ago, running second, trouble off turn number two at Dover, and a hard hit to the inside wall, heavily damaging. The six car and Stenhouse's car towed back to the garage, and the team looking on to see whether it's fixable and what they might salvage out of the day. We really shook up the standings as they run. We know they'll try to get this car back out, but this is still going to be a bad finish for Ricky Stenhouse and likely Elliott Sadler will have the point lead. Well, they do call this a team sport. Last week they had a mechanical failure. This Today they had a driver failure, so both and, of them had problems. And just for perspective on that, he started the day 13 points ahead of Elliott Sadler and now finds himself 14 points behind as Sadler runs on the racetrack with a whole lot of this race still left to go. Uh, uh, let's see, Morgan Shepard, free pass on that caution. He's back on the lead lap. Danica Patrick speeding, exiting pit road from 17th to 27th for the restart. And up front, it is now Kurt Busch tucked to the inside of Joey Logano, who has led all of the laps so far, Logano has. 
it seems like every time uh, these two, we see these 18 and 54 at the front of the field. Yep. Saw it at so Richmond, I, one, two. We saw them at Talladega the next week, one, two. Here they are again, one, two. So you got two top notch uh, drivers up front right now. This is going to be a good indication of what lane is the quickest on the restart, in my opinion. I mean, Kurt Busch, you know he's going to be coming to the gearbox to see if that bottom lane is quicker than the top now. contest right there. Logano just got such a huge run. Look at Kurt Busch get loose in the middle of the corner. You see Logano for his third time in a row now getting to this gearbox better than anybody out there. I used to say that uh, Kyle Busch was the very best driver in an 18 car. Maybe something about that 18 Maybe car. I don't yeah. know. Always oh, got great restarts. So Logano holds the lead while you watch some of the action on the track and after the restart. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has come from the medical center. Mike. Yeah, he has emerged from the care center and is anxious to get back to his race car. But first, we've got to ask you, what happened? Uh, driver made a mistake. Just running around there till a competition caution. Just probably, uh, you know, wasn't up on the wheel as much as I should have been. Just, just kind of riding around. Just car stepped out from under me, and I got behind on the steering. So I just hate it for all these guys. They work really hard. We changed a lot in practice and definitely made the car better. Um, you know, we just wish we could perform a little bit better for the for the Cargill guys. But uh, we'll be back. Uh, got off weekend next weekend, and uh, we'll get him at Michigan. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you. As you might imagine, uh, Alan, he's uh, very anxious to complete his media duties, go back and see whether or not they can get that car back in the race. Rusty, one thing that people probably don't really understand is how quickly these cars will jump out from under you once they lose uh, just a little bit of traction. Especially at this racetrack because of the transitions to the corners, Andy. I mean, and another thing to add, this is concrete. And uh, not asphalt racetrack and a lot of drivers will tell you that there's not as much grip on the concrete in their opinion uh, I tend to like it a lot of people don't but boy that thing stepped out just a little bit and when it gets loose There's only one way to go. That's down the hill into the inside wall You don't get a freebie like at some other racetracks like maybe Michigan or Charlotte where the back straight is real wide off the pace Mike Bliss who had slipped back in the first couple laps of the race got way wide in three and four and lost a number of spots and now he is slowing from 11th position. And we'll see what's up with the 44 car. Just a few laps till the competition caution that was scheduled for lap 40 by NASCAR. I want to just follow up with something on that Stenhouse story. I had a conversation here in the garage with him on Friday. And while you watch this, this is uh, Ty Dillon and Brian Scott here racing for sixth and seventh. Stenhouse told me I have to drive 100% all the time. He said, when I get a big lead and they want me to back off, he said, I back off and, I, and the lap times don't suffer any. Be, you know, sometimes go slower to go faster. But he said, but I feel like I'm not as sharp. I'm not as sharp in my reflexes. I'm not as sharp in what's going on in my head like I am when I'm going 100%. And I only bring that up because he said there we were just running along to the competition caution and I made a mistake. And, you know, your, your reaction to that as a driver. Well, I, I've, I've experienced that. I've went through that where I've had such big leads at this racetrack I've went through this where you got such big leads and you start slowing down and the car doesn't load up in the center of the corner near as much and all of a sudden it changes your handling. All of a sudden it's going to push or get loose because if you're running one speed and that's hard, that's what the car wants to do. But if you alter that, sometimes it really screws up the handling of the car. And that's what Caution. Ricky's alluding to. Right there. Clear, clear, clear. Competition. Your competition caution. NASCAR doing like it always does with a planned yellow, letting all of the lead lap cars come through before they throw the caution so they don't alter the scoring in some way. And before the leaders hit the pit lane under this yellow flag, an update on how the repair situation looks on that six, Mike. And just as was the case a week ago, all hands on deck here trying to get this six car repaired. You can see the hood is up. Uh, lots of damage on the left front corner of this race car. They've got lots of work to do if they hope to get it back in the race, Alan. And we saw when it hit the wall, the water kind of shoot up from inside, and I wondered if that was the radiator yeah. just literally exploding on the car when he hit. Yeah, I remember having to put a whole complete front frame section on the car during the race here. Crashed early in a 500 lap race. And Mike Bliss has gone back into the garage area and uh, that team trying to 
find out what happened. Mike came into this race eighth in the championship. Now pit road's open. Likely we'll see somebody like Justin Allgaier that pitted on the last caution. Just get fuel and go and maybe get the lead here. So Logano, Kurt Busch, Ryan Truex, Austin Dillon, Elliott Sadler, the top five coming in. Stops at lap 42. And we go to Shannon. Alan, Joey Logano, your race leader, he says as rubber continues to build up on the racetrack, it gets freer and freer. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment, track bar, as well as an open fuel. Dave? The other three cars on your screen are second, third, and fourth place. Austin Dillon just a little free in the center. He'll get adjustments for that Sunoco fuel. Kurt Busch's car was tied off at the corner. They're gaining on it, though. He'll get a track bar and air pressure adjustment. And the 20 of Brian Truex are pole center. He needs to turn better in the center. Here goes the Grind Boss crew finishing up, and they will not win the race off pit road. There were a few cars out ahead of them, Alan. There was some strategy played, as Mr. Peace respeculated. Yeah, you can see this developing under the last caution when saw us, Justin Allgaier and a couple more come in. They got their tires then. Now they can get fuel and get the lead. Justin Allgaier will be at the head of the pack when we restart in just a minute. National one, two, three, three. Well, Miles the Monster has already taken a chomp out of a few at the Monster Mile today, including championship leader Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who's got a beaten up race car and is back in the garage, still shy of the one quarter mark of this race. We heard from Stenhouse, Mike Bliss also back in the garage, Michael. Yeah, and we saw him fall off the pace, Alan, and now we know why. Bliss said he just had no power. They lost a cylinder out there. A tough break for this team that uh, had been inside the top ten in the standings coming into this afternoon, Alan. All right, Mike, thanks. So Bliss back in the garage as we get set for the restart. Remember, Justin Allgaier did not take fresh tires on this caution flag. Joey Logano to his inside in the 18 as we restart. to the inside of Allgaier for second as Logano is back out in front. Justin Allgaier was pretty upset with Kurt Busch early in this race. Thought that Kurt got into him and turned him sideways. We heard some radio chatter about that early. Let's see what these two do right now. See if they kind of respect each other or not. I don't think you're going to see Allgaier cut him a break. I don't think he's going to let him go because of that because Allgaier lost a lot of spots early in the race and he kind of blamed that on Kirk Bush because he thought he got into him. Little three wide there. Sam Hornish in the 12 on the move. Around Parker Kligerman in the 22 and Cole Witt in the 88. By the way, that's a nice recovery for this 88 team from starting in the back. Playing their strategy and getting up right now to be in, in the top 10. Yeah, we watched Cole all year long. Just really do a good job at Dale Jr.'s 88 car. But the 54 car at Kurt Busch we're looking at right now. We talked earlier about how much better this team's getting. I, I really did question whether they were way off in horsepower earlier in the year, but it appears to me that their power is coming back. And they're getting better power. They're learning. And that was the one thing I thought the, this brand new Kyle Busch team was really suffering from was power early. Well, the biggest thing they suffer from is just being a young team, new team. It takes a while to get established. This is a very competitive series. You're not just going to, I don't care if you're Kirk Bush or Kyle Bush, you're not going to just jump in here and have it all figured out. Let's talk about the strategy called by Jimmy Elledge in the 31, Andy. They stopped under the second caution and took tires at lap 28. Then under the competition caution, pit stop at lap 42, just fuel only to go from 11th to the lead. What determines oh. Kirk Bush in the wall hard? Whether that will be a successful strategy or Back not. Check it out down the front here. I think it's a, a successful strategy for them. Hey, this is yeah. this is one thing I'm concerned about with Kurt Busch. I mean, guys, I'm just going to put it out here. He, in my opinion, he keeps overdriving this car. He keeps doing it. We talked to one of the guys from James Finch's team today. Said he has wrecked 14 cars this year. He just got to slow down to go fast. Yeah, that's basically what happened. He just overdrove. He was in the groove. He just kind of overdrove the car on exit. 
Dave? Andy, one of the things that Kirk's been working on, because he has not driven this nationwide car that much, is maneuverability. Let yesterday in practice, they got the balance fairly good, but then they spent a lot of time just getting it to where Kirk could hustle the car, maneuver it in traffic. He just hasn't had a lot of laps in this type of race car. Well, the other thing is, too, that the expectations are very high for these, both of these Bush brothers to run well and win races, and they, they feel it. If you, but they may be pushing too hard, more than the car really has, until they get this car developed to the level of the Joe Gibbs cars and the Childress cars. They may not have a car that's capable of doing what they're used to, and that's winning. Well, you don't want to overdrive the car. You don't want, want to, you, you try to make it go fast, but you don't try to take a car that at the points a fourth or fifth place car to make it a first place car, or else you're going to get in a wall. Things like that are going to happen with them. Four top 10 spots, 88 Cole Witt, 22 Parker Kligerman today in the Penske car. One of the Penske cars, and right behind them, Elliot Sadler, the championship leader now in the two. And you got to believe that Elliot Sadler knows everything that's going on right now with Ricky Stenhouse, and he's thinking we got to gain some points today, guys. We can't crash our own car or have bad pit stops or be get a pit road speed and penalty, something like that. Yeah, I'm worried, though, Rusty. We gave you two cars, and I took the field. Your guys out there gone, 1.6 seconds ahead. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I'd say watching this two car, he, in the first run of the race, got way wide in three and four one time, and looked like he had his hands full. And now he's back there outside the top ten, yeah, I mean, he's, he's struggling a little bit. I didn't, I didn't expect this because I watched them in practice and they were extremely happy. They, they were making little changes and everything was doing exactly what they thought it would do. Talked to Luke Lambert at length this morning. And they felt very confident they were going to be good enough to win. I don't know why that they're not any better than they are. Uh, you got anything more, Dave, on this two team? And he's wanted to give you Elliott's report. In early in the run before they pitted, he was free to where the car compresses and then sliding the front tires late. And then as the pit stops approached, his car was harder to turn from the center off the corner. Now they made a track bar and air pressure adjustment on the stop, but he may still be struggling with it. I'm telling you what, when you got a race car that lands and it's loose getting in, yet plows the front end, pushing the front on exit, that's a hard thing to fix. Yeah, it is, but I, that's one of the things when I talked to Luke this morning that they expected to have to maybe adjust for is loose in and tie it off. I don't think they thought it would be this bad, though. Cornish 12, Whoa. Busher 30, Pike. Those two right there got together a little bit. Eighth place just changed hands. And Cole Witt trying to get a piece of that action as well. A little past quarter distance today. In a five-hour Energy 200 for the NASCAR Nationwide Series at the Monster Mile, Joey Logano has been monster fast so far. Beautiful Saturday here at the Monster Mile. Not far up the road from here in Dover is English Town, New Jersey, where the Toyota NHRA Super Nationals are happening. Qualifying today, 4.30 Eastern on ESPN. Tomorrow, coverage of the finals, ESPN 2 at 4.30 Eastern time as well. Also tomorrow, the Eyes on IndyCar Series at Belle Isle, presented by ShopAutoWeek.com. That's on ABC, starting at 3.30 Eastern time. And after a week off, the NASCAR Nationwide Series returns to action up in Michigan on ABC at 3.30 Eastern Time. That should be on Saturday, June 16th, not Sunday. See Ricky Stenhouse in there working on that damaged race car. Like they got a lot of work to do down there, Mike. Yeah, and you can feel the sense of urgency uh, amongst the, the six car ranks. I counted, including uh, Ricky Stenhouse himself, 20 different people working on this race car. You can tell how badly they want to get it out there, but extensive work being done. They've had to replace the radiator, uh, various filters, hoses. They've had to cut some of the steel tubing. Lots of work being done on this race car. There's a limit to how many people you can have over the wall on pit road working on the car, but there's no limit in the garage. And there is a limit to what you can gain from this, because right now, uh, there are only what there are about five six cars that are uh, seven cars that are not on the lead lap everybody else still on the lead lap so what they're working against is to get back out there against cars that will fall out of the race between here and say lap 150 and there's a point beyond which you can't overtake cars 
anymore. They're not worried about that. Right now, they're worried about just getting the car fixed, get it back out there and as, as quickly as possible, and then we'll assess the situation and see what we maybe can gain or, or not. But the main thing they're focused on now is just getting the car fixed, and they still got a lot of work to do. They go out there get some points. But, you know, guys, Brad, one thing I'm concerned about from Ricky Stenhouse right now is what his mindset is right now. Here's a champion that whenever you win the championship, I would think that you think you could do it again, but now when you got consecutive back-to-back -back problems, what do you think he's going through? Yeah, that's a great question, Rusty, and, and the thing I think about when I look at Ricky Stenhouse is, you know, he went through so much early on in his career. We talked about him wrecking race cars, tearing race cars up. He goes on to win the championship now the last couple of weeks. He's really struggled. Uh, had a mechanical failure, obviously, at Charlotte, and now this. Is that is that bad luck starting to creep back in? And it has to be in the back of his mind. You see him jumping in with those guys trying to lend a hand because those guys work so hard he appreciates them but yes mentally he looks like he's down if you look at him right there he can't wait to get back in that race car and go out and do his part so mentally it has to affect him his rival for the championship sadler back in 12th position and not having the best of days here in dover by the way stenhouse has finished outside the top 10 in consecutive races only once in the last 47 races wow Joey Logano has led all but three of the laps so far. The only three laps Logano has not led were led by Justin Allgaier, whose team played a little strategy uh, on the early cautions and the competition caution to get some track position. They are hanging in there in second spot now, though a minute ago, while we were reporting on Stenhouse, Allgaier had a close call in traffic. Take yes, a look at this. Brad Teague thought he was clear, not quite. <laughs> He left his driver. He's, he's thinking he's got enough momentum to speed to pass him. And he actually got up there and crowded that fellow and Brad Teagan. About turned himself right into the corner. Dave, that looked pretty hairy to me. It did, Rusty. And I got to tell you, Brad Teague is not the reason Justin used to hate the Dover International Raceway here because he used to finish poorly. His average finish here is 16.8 until last fall when his car was so bad, he was just forced to kind of ride around this place. And he said when he did it, he found out that sort of slowing down, his car was a lot better. So he came back this year with a whole lot of confidence and a much better attitude about Dover. Well, they played their cards right so far and got them up to second spot. And you can see from watching that onboard shot of Justin how hard a driver's working in these corners, even when he's got a good car. Yeah, I, I, one thing you see here is on concrete, how the car, if it pushes a little bit, can chatter those front tires. And, and it, uh, the feedback that you get on concrete is a lot different than you get on an asphalt. Uh, you're track. exactly right, Andy, because on the asphalt, you don't get that much of that chatter feel you talk about. And that's when you turn the wheel, the tires might slide, but chatter, they actually just skip across the racetrack, and that's a real strange feeling. And it's something that a lot of people battle and have a problem with at this particular track. There's a great battle for fifth. Austin Dillon on the inside of Ryan Scott. You know, Brian's thinking, I got to get this baby brought home. I can't have another crash. It's a fairly short race with 78 laps into this 200 already. And both of these guys, Austin Dillon and Brian, have been pretty clean out there all day long. Yeah, that's exactly what Brian Scott needs to be thinking about, is just get this spot up. Nobody behind them. Look, we've wrecked too many race cars to be contesting this spot at this point of the race. So Austin Dillon up a spot to fifth. And you know, one thing I remind you guys about this particular track, as the race goes on, it changes. They got to be giving their crew chiefs, the drivers, to the right information on how they need to fix this car. I have not really seen any cars out here that are not moving around. I see them pushing the front end. I see them loose, stuff like this. So this next pit stop is going to be pretty key, but the driver's got to be game on when he gives that information, that crew chief, of what he needs. When you're out here driving this racetrack, can you do that while you're racing under green? Is, is, it, is it distracting for the driver to be talking about his car during this run? What's distracting, Andy, is trying to put in the right words of what you're going to say. You're driving it, and you're thinking, okay, this thing's loose. Do I need a wedge adjustment, or am I going to ask the guys maybe suggest some tire pressures? Some drivers just say, I'm loose or tight, and they leave it up to the team to do. Some drivers don't do it that way. I never could do it that way. i got to give these guys a sense of direction, what they need to fix my car. But Joey Logano's car needs no fixing. 
He is up front and done most of the leading in this one while Ricky Stenhouse's car has needed a lot of fixing and they're patching it up. The driver is beginning to buckle back in. It's the five hour energy 200 for the NASCAR nationwide series at Dover. Remember to check out race buddy enhanced coverage for select nationwide series races with more cameras than ever. Log on to NASCAR nationwide series dot com slash race buddy. So just a small unscientific G yeah. meter. How here about this Dover. right here? We got a G meter with this water bottle. Straight away relaxes corner thrown to the side and back. You can just see, just see the G-forces <laughs> that, that the water bottle's going through. You know what the driver's got to be going through. And, and watch the top of the straw there, and listen to the sound of the engine and how the straw acts like a needle when he hits the gas. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. Good stuff. <laughs> Joey Logano out in front and continuing to dominate. He's three and a half seconds ahead of second place. Checking out some of the side-by-side -side or fights for position. That is Ty Dillon, 33. And Parker Kligerman in the 21. And Doc, they're racing for 12. Absolutely. Uh, Ty Dillon uh, making his nationwide debut. Getting a lot of help, a lot of instructions on how to drive as he gets passed back by Parker Kligerman. Listen in to what they told Ty a moment ago. The 18's running in just like you are, but he left a diamond about a car width up the track. He gets a straighter run down the hill up off. See if that'll work for her here. Nothing out back. He's doing it more so one and two than three and four. That information out there helped him. They've also just now told him to back up here in the back up the corner so you can diamond the racetrack. And now grandfather that came on the radio, Richard Childers said, stay with the 22. You can get him up high. Stay high and go back by the 22. So a lot of information going in the head of young Ty Dillon. Also pretty good information too. You saw Ty on the top side of that racetrack getting a big good run on the X of the corners. Now he's trying to pick the throttle up a little bit, get that momentum going, run down that hill like they were talking. Here comes the six. Stenhouse Jr. coming back onto the track. 66 laps down to the race leader and currently showing in 33rd spot. The thing now is the team hopes they didn't shortcut any of the repairs so they have to come back and fix, fix it again. They, they've got a lot of stuff on that car that's just kind of hanging and dangling you don't want anything falling off of it. I'll tell you the toughest thing is go out with a car like he's got right now with no nose on it and the only thing sticking out there is the radiator and if you get on a restart a little too close to somebody in front of you bump them the only thing you're going to bump is that radiator then you're completely out of the race. These two young guys are having a fun fight. I'm impressed with Ty able to find to search around this racetrack and find something that works for him and this, this is working he's able to make that pass on clearly. And when you find something that's working for you like that, you want to use it the rest of the race. But I'll tell you one thing I just saw then, Andy, he took that right side tires and put it up so high, he was almost out of the groove. And if that happens, you're going to slide up the track, pick up all that rubber, and lose everything he just gained. Yeah, he's making it work, though. He's, you can tell he's gained quite a bit of distance now on Kligerman. Speaking of young guys, the young guy that started on pole for today's race, Ryan Truex in the Joe Gibbs Racing 20. He is running fourth. And I'm out of control. Can't even drive it up high. But here's a guy who can't even drive his car up high. Well, you know, one thing he needs to realize, if he was looking at the times that we're looking Whoa. at right now, that last time by, he was... Uh, Probably the third quickest guy in the racetrack was Ty Dillon. Was, you know, was, no, I'm sorry, with Ryan Truex. Yeah. And Ryan said he was so loose. He had that steering wheel turned left hand over right hand last corner. Start to hurry up again. It's like if I try to run hard, I lose my right rear and I got to let it go down. Well, you're right, Rusty. Look at the lap time. The last lap, while we're watching this, he was the fastest car on the track. Yeah, and my point is that you've seen this a thousand times, too. You might think your car is really bad. But in comparison to everybody else, you're not as bad as you think you are. It might feel bad, but it's actually running pretty good. Right, exactly right. That's what the team needs to be telling him and say, hey, look, you're fast. The, car, the times are great. I know the car's loose, but just take care of it and make time with it. 
Coming to the halfway point of today's NASCAR Nationwide Series race in Dover. The first half of this one so far highlighted by Joey Logano leading all but three laps. Logano continuing to set a very blistering pace here at the Monster Mile. Joey Logano has got it going on at Dover today. In the NASCAR Nationwide Series 200 miler, Joey has led 104 of 107 laps so far, continuing a trend at this racetrack where guys find that feel and that setup, and they tend to dominate a race. I tell you, there's a lot of drivers who got favorite racetracks, and this is absolutely one of Joey's. I mean, I had Bristol where I won nine times in Martinsville and Richmond and places like that. You can tell Joey is in that zone two in a style director. This is his, definitely one of his favorite tracks. Justin Allgaier running second, 3.1 seconds behind Logano. They pulled a little strategy earlier to gain some track position. There's Kurt Busch running third, despite scuffing the right side of that car on the wall a little while back. And fourth is Ryan Truex. We go up to speed with Nationwide Insurance. Check in on some of these guys chasing the top three. Dave? Well, and Ryan Truex said most of it himself, that the car is out of control. It's really not been to his liking most of the day. And here we all wondered if he was going to be in pain from his appendectomy 11 days ago. His car has been the pain today, even though it's fast. The three of Austin Dillon has been very good the whole weekend. Crew Chief Danny Stockman told me, I haven't seen Austin this happy about a race car since the truck days. So far today, just a little bit loose. Mike? It's been a rough season for Brian Scott. Last week, crashing out of Charlotte, marked his fifth DNF of the year. He said he took the wind out of the team. They could certainly use a good run. They're getting it today. They're running sixth, although he says he's losing rear grip as this run goes on. Mike, the two of Elliott Sadler may be among the first cars to pit under green flag stops. He may have to take a little more time on pit road than others to remove a spring rubber from the right rear of the car. This car right now will not run well. It is uh, tight on landing to exit, and that are actually loose, and that taking that spring rubber out would help it. Doc? Michael and that started back in 23rd, guys, and he pitted on lap 28 for four tires, came back in on the competition yellow for fuel only. That's what got him the track position. But right now he says that the car has no brakes. The brake pedal is down and will not come back. Also very loose on entry. Shannon. Well, Sam Hornis Jr. said Dover, it's a track he just loves coming to. However, the love was very lost this weekend. He said he was really disappointed in practice. The car was way too loose. It has been decent in this race, however. Really, the only area he's struggling in is through turn. He says he can't make the pass in that area. Stop. Cole went. The crew left the cow cover on during qualifying, which crushed the air filter. They had to change the air filter after qualifying, which meant he had to go to the back of the pack in 41st. Fuel only under the top in yellow, and he now has gone all the way up to run in the top 10 in 10th position. Guys? Well, that's that's tough right there. That little cover they put over the cowl opening at the base of the windshield, and they evidently forgot to take it off when he qualified. And that's how the engine gets all of its air, so starved for horsepower. And Cole Witt running a lap down and losing a couple of spots with those he's racing with as James Busher and Ty Dillon go by in the 33 and the 30. Now coming up on green flag pit stops momentarily. In fact, here's second place Justin Allgaier dropping down off the banking and he'll be the first one to come to pit road. Now the pit road speed here at Dover is 35 miles an hour. It's a long pit, low pit road. It's a curved pit road at the beginning there. And this pit road also has a very short speed trap at the end of it. This racetrack has produced more speeding penalties on pit road than any other track that has two races over the last several years. Here he comes, Dave. And the car for Justin Lately, when he gets to the center of the corner, the landing part, it won't turn. So there will be a track bar adjustment to help that out. Four tires and full of Sunoco fuel. Great strategy played so far for the 31 today. 88 on pit road, and they're having some issues as well. The car said it's loose out of the gas, tight under throttle. They're going to make an adjustment, air pressure adjustment. This would be the final pit stop of the race. If we go green, they can stretch the fuel, although it's going to be very close. We would not have enough for a green-white checker. Much. 
Parker Kligerman has been complaining a little bit that the car's been loose all the way around. The team going to work right now on the 22 car, expecting a four-tire change and fuel. Also, a slight air pressure adjustment on the 22, Doc. Ty Dillon, four tires. are going to fill it up with Sunoco fuel. No adjustment up to the change. That's slight air pressure adjustment, rear tire. Otherwise, one event will stop. He's down and away. Dave. Kurt Busch has had quite an adventure. He tapped the wall a little bit. The car has been a little bit tight. Uh, and then a little bit loose. Right now, the looseness they're going to take care of by putting a spring rubber in the left rear of the car. Four tires, Sunoco Fuel. Shannon? Hey, guys, Sam Hornis Jr. started this race 10th, running in the top 10. Says he's still on the tight side, so they're going to go to work with air pressure on that number 12 car you see on the left-hand left side of your screen. They're also going to put four tires and fuel for Sam Hornis Jr. Dave? Elliot Sadler had been running in the seventh position, had picked up a few spots. He had no lateral grip off the wall or when the car landed in the middle of the corner. They're going to take a spring rubber out of the right rear. As soon as the tire changer takes it off, he'll pop that out. Take just a second right there. And then they'll put the tire back on. He will take four tires on this pit stop. Austin Dillon is also on and off of pit road in the three car, guys. It's a beautiful thing when your car is not only the fastest on the track and handling well, but it's also getting better mileage than everyone, too. Joey Logano still out on the racetrack, not yet having made the move to pit road. And he should be able to make it now from here to the end of the race. Oh, this time, this time. He's got the fastest car. He's got the best mileage at the moment, and generally his pit crew is probably the best on pit road, so I'm interested to see how this pit stop happens. It'll be quick, quick they are. You. All right, tricky pit road entry here at Dover. Back her down, back her down. Danica Patrick just ahead of Logano on the pit entry here. So Joey gives up the lead momentarily. <laughs> momentarily. And while he works his way down to his stall, Mike. Danica Patrick has been struggling with a loose condition. Uh, not necessarily comfortable being loose here, although her crew chief, Tony Urey, suggested very much at the beginning of the weekend she needs to be in order to be successful. She's been complaining, she's been loose in and off a four-tire change in the seven ship. Joe Lugano, your race leader, is in. The crew told him, be very careful on this pit stop, making your way down the road. We have a huge lead. A little bit of air pressure and four tires for Joey Lugano, and they're holding on to fuel, and he's down and away. Yeah, that's 14.7, and they held the car a couple of seconds for that extra fuel just to make sure they get it completely full. I know they can make it to the end if we go green. I like how they told them, hey, you got a big lead, don't mess up. <laughs> well, you know, that's the point, right? Drivers need to hear that. Drivers get jacked up on the racetrack. They don't, they don't need to go out there and mess up what they've been working on all day long. So all guy are running second, and you saw that Logano came up on the racetrack well ahead of him. Uh -oh. oh, trouble! Timmy Hill, 41, gets nudged into the inside wall, and the caution's out. Correct it here. Hold down. Hold the bottom. How bad is it? It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad on the front. Yeah, he called that one out. Mm. Well, it's hard to wreck one easy at Dover. I um, right front's pretty killed, man. Been watching some it's, of these groups of cars the pretty hard. that are not on the lead lap racing for position, and it's been pretty intense. And then some of the cars racing for position among the leaders came up into them, and there were just too many cars racing hard in too small a space. That was pretty obvious, wasn't it? These guys are really getting after it. Let's take a replay and take a look and see what happens here. Elliot Sadler just gets by before this happens, and this is where I've seen Elliot in the middle of some of these uh, predicaments like you've been talking about, Alan, where these cars have been racing each other. Extremely hard. It looks like Timmy Hill got three wide. Really didn't mean to get three wide. When he got down there, there was nothing else to do. Let's take a look again here. He's in the center. Gets loose. And Joey Gase in the 52 there that he was trying, it looked like, to stay off of and cut inside. And Sam Hornish was already to his inside in the 12. Yeah, Hornish got a piece of that. He tied Dylan that way. See, Joey, the leader, just gets through. Two and 12 are racing for a spot there. Yeah, I think the deal is is that the, the lap cars were trying to race each other, and these, these leaders came by a lot quicker and got up on them before they really realized. 
the situation. We talked about how tough the exit of these corners are, and that's exactly where it happened. At. There's not much grip up there when the banking starts flattening out as it exits the corner. And that's where these cars get a little, little wild, and that's where this one's happened at. All right, so Timmy Hill out of his car. Uh, we'll see what kind of damage Sam Hornish has to the nose of that 12. Well, the significance here, too, when this caution came out is that the two car is being shown as the first car one lap down. And guys, that's a lot of damage on this 12 car, Andy. Yeah, yeah, he got a, he got a pretty good piece of that. And the right front tire is flat. It's, looks like it's down on the inner liner. But you can see, well, my point is, is if you see why Elliot Sadler and Sam Hornish were racing so hard in that position, they were trying to be that car in case the caution came out to be that uh, free pass car. Good point. And stuff uh, flying out from under the car that's in front of Sam as well. Yeah, there's pieces of a tire, of a tire looks like coming apart. It actually looked like Sam's car, the right front tire, was actually towed out like he's got a, a steering problem now, too, a tow out. They got to fix that. They got to fix the, the fender. We got a lot of work to do to that 12 car. All right, pit road's open as you saw. And Sam is not on the lead lap, so he's gonna pit a lap earlier than technically allowed in order to get some of that uh, damage worked on. Yeah, they're gonna spend some time down there getting that fixed so they're not worried about track position. Here they come, Shannon. Hey, yeah, guys, Chad Walter over the radio telling Sam Hornish Jr., come on down, guys, take your time. Take a look at that right side. We're going to put it up. We're going to make the adjustments and the fix on the right side. Replace those tires and see what's uh, making that drop and down so low. You see them pulling out that right side fender right now. They are going to work on the right side, and what I've been hearing over the radio is that they'll then go back out, get back around, and come back down pit road to work on the left side. Alan? They do have some work to do. For Sam Hortis Jr., who came into this race fourth in the Nationwide Series Championship. Be the second one of the top five to have some troubles today. Back at Dover, coming to the restart. There'll be 71 laps to go in this race. Joey Logano has dominated so far, leading all but three laps. Elliott Sadler got the free pass on that caution. Sadler is running in eighth position, but he's got a restart at the tail end of the pack by getting the free pass. So he's behind all the lap cars between he and the other lead lappers as we go green. Second place, Kurt Busch on Justin Allgaier. And Ryan Truex going to try and take advantage. Nice move. Whoop, whoop, wiggle, wobble. It's like Kurt Busch's car still loose. They put a spring rubber in the left rear under that green bike stop. Austin Dillon in the three, trying to get a spot from 31. Justin Allgaier, that's fourth. What well, a whole time these, all, these guys are all racing around. Joey Logano has got that clear track, and he's just checking out right now by Kurt Busch. And Ryan Truex are just running side by side. I'll tell you, when they run side by side, that really slows the car down big time. I'm looking at the lap times right now. Last time by six tenths of a second. So oh. trouble. Brad Sweet. Danica's got a piece of this one, too. Yeah. And Elliot Sadler weaves his way through. Danica spun inside to get it running. Back up. All right, you're good now. Go ahead. Ooh, big wreck out of Danica. Pat, the right front destroyed in that car. A lot of parts and pieces being shed there. Sam Hornish on the bottom here. Gets up into her. Oop. The last thing I remember between Hornish and Danica, there was no love loss there on previous races. Yeah, that, that wreck right there was initiated by Sam Hornish. Gets into the left rear of Danica. She can't do anything but try to chase the car up the hill right into Brad Sweet. 
See the deck lid tethers doing their job holding that deck lid attached to the car on Brad Sweet's car. On board the seven. And from Hornish. Two outside. You One can, outside. You can hear Sam pedaling the car. Yes. You know, we've, we've talked all day long about how tough it is to exit these corners, how tight they get. I just can't emphasize enough how turn four, you know, after these restarts is just a tough, tough corner. You try to make a pass. You see an opening. You go for it. Things like this happen. Pit stops, second and third place have come in. The leader stayed out. Dave? Neither one particularly happy with their race cars right now. Both will get adjustments. It's loose from the center off for the 54. That'll be a wedge adjustment for Kurt Busch. As for the 31 of Justin Allgaier, they did get his car from tight to loose. Now it's way too loose. So they're going to go back just a little bit on those adjustments. Four fresh tires, fuel to the end. All right, well, with just eight cars on the lead lap, not giving up a whole lot to come in and adjust it if it's not right. Yeah, not a bad move by either one of these cars because they weren't good enough to win. So trouble in a race for 15th and 16th between Danica Patrick and Brad Sweet, where Sam Hornish got involved, and now three cars have been wrecked. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN2 features the NL Central leading Cardinals as they square off against the Mets at 8. Then Monday night at 7 Eastern, the NL West leading Dodgers take on the Phillies. Both games available on ESPN3 and also live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. We are under caution with 64 to go at Dover. This is our fifth yellow of the day. This one because of a little contact between Sam Hornish Jr. and... Danica Patrick. A lot of contact. Uh, Hornish gets under Danica. Ray. I mean, he causes the accident. I can't wait to see what happens after this because she is little, but she is tough. And I'm sure she's going to want to whoop him after this race for record. Getting ready to go green, A.B. 63 to go. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh. <laughs> Kurt Busch on the move. Remember, he and Justin Allgaier, that bright orange 31 car, stopped for tires under this yellow when those in front of them did not. Free pass, by the way, for this caution. Ty Dillon in the 33, ninth place. First, second, and third. All the Joe Gibbs Toyotas having a great day today so far. Brian Scott, a fellow we talked about a lot in our show, but having some problems early this year. Seems like he's having a good clean run right now. So far. Don't want to jinx him or nothing, but <laughs> he's holding a pretty wheel, I would call it, at the moment. That's what Leonard Wood used to say all the time, holding a pretty wheel. <laughs> Teammates going at it. Like Elliott's car is a little better than it was earlier. He got that free pass and they made an adjustment. Luke Lambert, the crew chief. It's like he turned the screws in the right direction this time. Well, look at the weather a little bit, Andy. I mean, it's the, the sun's really bright earlier. Now it's a little bit overcast. The temperatures are moving around. Track temperatures are moving around. And they've had a deal with the green racetrack because of all the rain the other night after their practice session was over. They have had to work on this two car for Elliott Sadler quite a bit during the course of this race. How about it, Dave? And even when they got it better, Alan, they didn't get it far enough. He's been talking about lateral grip, needing more of that all day long. So when they had the luxury of time as the free pass recipient and time on pit road, they made a shock adjustment, clicked the shock a couple of clicks, and a wedge adjustment to try to make that car better. And so far, it has been. Yeah, that's one thing, you know, clicking those shocks does really affect the, the whole personality of the car, and that's something you did, wouldn't normally change on a, on a normal pit stop. But having that extra time, like Dave said, they can go in there and do something like that, and this might be a turning point for the two teams. Here's Kurt, uh, I'm sorry, James Busher challenging Justin Allgaier. Now, Allgaier's car just hasn't been as good. He stayed out that one time early on in the race and got that track position as the competition cautioned and was able to hold second Actually, second spot till the next time he pitted, but since then, his car just hasn't been there. Now, the race for position in this group is the 30 and the 88, Busher and Witt. They're both a lap down. Busher right now, though, is the first car one lap down and wants to stay there. Oh, he's going to fight hard for that. Get another caution, get a free pass, get back in the hunt. 
You think a leader runs hard up front while he's leading the race. You ought to be a lap down and know the guy that's right behind you is a lap down. You got to race him to get back on the lead lap. And that is the hardest you will drive all day long. Because when you see an opportunity to get it back, man, that's, that's all, all that's on your mind. It's, you've got to drive really hard. Get up on a wheel, I call it. You're always up on the wheel. Sometimes too much. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of up on the wheel. That's a different paint scheme I'm used to looking at the 88 car there, Cole Witt. A little bit hard to see. But he's having a good run. I'm pretty impressed about his run today. And he's, he's car looks like it's handling well out there. Right now he's in 11th position. He is a lap down. Race of Busher, like we talked about, to get back to that lucky dog position. It's hard to have a hiccup like they did in qualifying and go to the back and have a good good day. First off, it's hard to, to make your way back to the front, but also to stay out of trouble. We've seen a lot of cautions, a lot of spins and crashes, and they've been able to avoid that. See, this time, though, Ryan Truex has not let Joey Logano stretch that lead out like he has been. Truex hometown, Mayetta, New Jersey, exit 63A off the Garden State Parkway, as they refer to it. And this is the home track for the Truex plan, and boy, Ryan Truex would sure love to get a win here. It's always been a, a family place. Um, you know, there's always people out in the out in the uh, camper lots cooking out seafood and all this other stuff, and we go hang out with them. So it's always been a, a good family, you know, a good family weekend, and uh, that just makes me want to win it even more. Well, Truex started on pole, and he's running second. Thirteen drivers have gotten their first Nationwide Series win at this track, but, Dave, it's been a while since that's happened. Maybe I checked in under the caution with crew chief Matt Lucas and Ryan's dad, Martin Sr., who was sitting on the pit box, they've been discussing what's been going on. I said, it sounds like you tried to settle him down just a little bit, and that appears to be the case. Somewhere between shut up and drive and just get out there and race the racetrack. He's had a lot to say today about the race car, but as you guys keep pointing out, it's very fast. <laughs> all right, Dave. Well, I'll tell you also, you know, how badly the young man wants it and in limited opportunities that he gets to get behind the wheel of the car. Doesn't have a full-time ride. Yeah, it has to turn the intensity level up by not being able to say, okay, we'll get him next week. It's this week for him. Yeah. Well, he can smell it right now. The last time by, he was the fastest car on the racetrack by about a half a tenth of a second. And he keeps catching Joey just a little bit. And remember, he's going to catch him oh, there. Left car. close. In trouble, 24, is Tim Bainey Jr., one of the drivers making his Nationwide Series debut today. And he and the leader have tangled off of turn two. I'm all right. He hit really hard. In that case right there, Joey was, he was looking in the mirror. He saw that 20 car put some pressure on him. He was trying to get, needed to make that pass and get going. Sixth caution of the race is out. Shannon? Yeah, guys, Joey Logano, we can all agree that he's had a fast race car, but traffic, in traffic, has been a challenge for him the entire race. He says every time he gets in traffic and tries to pass a car, he just gets tight. They're talking about coming down pit road and trying to work on that 18 just to try to loosen him up a little bit and get him right for the end of this race. Well, got nine cars on the lead lap. Going to be a tenth with a free pass car. Uh, the uh, 31 and 54 stopped earlier. We'll see if they call that 18 in or not. Yeah, Joey just gets into him and spins, spins him out. Yeah, that, that kind of contact's not supposed to spin somebody out. Really kind of intended to move them. You can tell Joey just got a little over anxious right there. Hey, look who's on pit road. Took that young man out of the race. He's not alone. Austin Dillon coming in as well from fourth spot. So the leader, Logano, having led 148 of the 151 laps in this race so far. Here we are. He's going to no give mistakes. up that top spot for some service. Here we are. Bring Shannon. it to me. Yeah, guys, you heard him say no mistakes. Bring that car down. They are going to just try to give him freed up just a little bit. He says no more, just a little bit on the back end and four tires for the 18. Dave. The reason Austin Dillon wanted to pin, he thought he might have buzzed his tires when he uh, tried to avoid what was happening all around him out there. So they came down to get four fresh and see if that'll improve his handling and speed till the end, guys. So Joey Logano, the race leader, runs up on a slower car. 
And I'll say this on Logano's side, a much slower car who wasn't all the way at the bottom of the racetrack and wasn't all the way up off the bottom of the racetrack either. I'll tell you, as a race car driver, you got a gas pedal and you got a brake pedal. You need to learn how to use both of them. Tim Bainey Jr. in the wall and in trouble. And Ryan Truex now has the lead. He didn't like that. A few weeks back in the Nationwide Series, this was the side at the end of the race at Darlington. The two of Elliott Sadler pushed aside by Joey Logano. Yeah, we see Joey get into Elliott, crosses him up in front of the field, and uh, Joey goes on to, to win the race. Uh, it's not the first time we've seen Joey get into someone. Indeed not. In fact, it just happened here today at Dover. That is why we are under our sixth caution of the day. Logano approaching the lap car, the 24 of Bainey Jr., and... Gets Pushes right into it, yeah, gets into his left rear, and uh, I don't think he meant to wreck him, but it looked like he was trying to move him up out of his groove, so here's I don't my, know. Here's my question to you. Does Joey Logano do that on Sunday if he's leading the race? You know, the question I have is it would be for Rusty Wallace. I would like to know, Rusty, if that's you coming down on that young man, what do you do? Do you give him opportunity to get out of the way, or do you stuff him? No, you got to give him opportunity, Brad. There's no doubt about that. Look, I, I, I usually don't bust on many people, but i got a problem right with Joey Logano right now. I mean, I see a trend with him, what I saw at Darlington with Elliott Sadler. Now, Tim Bainey, these guys work their butt off, put every nickel they got into this car to get to this track. Logano gets behind him. He could have gave him a break. He got up in his quarter panel, destroyed the kid's car. In my opinion, it was uncalled for. So Logano right now, after pitting, will be back in seventh position, and it'll be Ryan Truex who will be out in front of this race when it goes back green. Our in-race reporter for the day is Justin Allgaier, and Allgaier's running in fifth spot right now. Hey, Justin Allgaier, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? Yeah, Rusty, go ahead. Buddy, we've been watching you all day long. You're holding a pretty wheel out there, buddy, but it looks like the car's been loose, looks like it's been pushing. The sun's in and out, the track tempers are changing. How's the car handling all these changes today? Well, like you said, the track tips definitely changed the handling on this old branch Chevy, but uh, right now we're a little bit tight, which, uh, you know, usually here you need to be a little bit tight to go forward. So hopefully uh, we can have a good restart here, pick a few of these guys off, and uh, these newer tires will prevail in the end. So you're pretty comfortable with your final adjustments. You think you got what it takes to get to the front here at the end, right? I think so. That 18's been pretty fast all day long. And not for tires, but uh, huge thank you to all the guys, the Brent Racing uh, team. They've done a great job in the pits down there. And Jimmy Ellis has done a great job on the box. So, uh, hey, we'll bring it home, do the best we can, and uh, try and come out of here with a good solid finish. Great point day. Okay, buddy, thanks for talking to us. Have a great rest of the race. Going racing in one more lap, Doc. Check in Richard Childress and Richard, your two grandsons, Austin and Ty, running six and eight right now. Now, we expected Austin to be there, but how about Ty? Pretty impressive debut here in the Nationwide Series. Yeah, it really is. I mean, his, his car's been really loose all day. He's did a good job managing it, and I just hope we get through. I told him to run 200 laps, and everything else was a bonus. 200 laps from grandfathers that get us uh, 200 laps and maybe get us a top 10 right now. He's doing both. Guys? Austin is uh, running in eighth, having just pitted under this caution. Ty is running in sixth. All right, restart's going to come with 43 laps to go. Logano is back in seventh after pitting. Up front, it's Ryan Truex with the other Joe Gibbs racing car to his inside. Brian Scott in the 11. Also, by the way, a young man very hungry for a Dover win. I think we're going to see the hardest racing we've seen all day now. Sadler, two, Kurt Busch, 54, third place. Both looking for a way through. Well, Elliott drove his car in really hard, and the car did not stick. Oh, <laughs> Kurt's didn't he's stick like a two. <laughs> there he comes back. But look at Kurt drive that thing in the corner. He's still trying to get it rolled up and turned. I'll tell you, one thing I've seen all day long, guys, on a restart, if that second place car doesn't get right into turn one on that guy's bumper. That lead car checks out. You have got to be right there on these restarts. You see Brian Scott in that 11 car. 
He's in second right now. He got kind of way behind of Ryan Truex. Now you see these guys side by side. You see the team cars, the yeah, Hornish Penske cars. Hornish's car has damage, but it looks like it's still plenty fast. Makes the pass on Klugerman. That is to be the first car one lap down in the event we get a caution shortly. So Hornish gets that spot for now. He's in 11th place. And by the way, following up on the earlier trouble, the seven car was up on the, the jack stands in the garage being repaired. Uh, Danica Patrick after that incident we saw earlier that Hornish was involved in. A lot of scrap parts in there, Mike. Yeah, there's debris strewn all around this race car, Alan. Uh, not only sheet metal, but uh, they've torn the brake ducting out of here. I, I saw a broken front shock. They're doing a lot of welding on the right front right now. The steering assembly completely mangled. Still, the effort continues to try to get the seven car back in the race. Meanwhile, Danica sits in the cockpit, hoping that she'll be able to get back, but there's just 39 laps remaining. Not the way she wanted to spend her afternoon in Dover, up on jack stands back in the garage. Well, she needs all the experience she can get. This is killing her right now that she can't get out there and get that valuable experience, especially at a track that's tough to drive like Dover. Well, the two Joe Gibbs cars are two of the three out in front with Truex and Scott, Kurt Busch in third. And if he doesn't get to the front, it's not for lack of trying because about each end of this racetrack, off of two and off of four, he's got the right side of that 54 car hung out and he's driving it off into the corners. He's just trying to find a way to make up ground. He's, he's actually tried to widen the track out a little bit off of two a couple of times. We can yeah. see the right side of the car where he's made contact with the wall. He has been driving the wheels off of it, though. And here comes Logano. Had only moved up one spot since the restart. That gets him a second. That's Logano up to fifth. Logano's going to have to have another caution if he's going to get back in this. Yes. Yes, he is. Odds of that happening? Probably pretty good. They're actually pretty good, yeah. <laughs> 36 laps to go at the Monster Mile in Dover. Can Ryan Truex have a home track celebration? Getting down to it at Dover, Delaware with an NASCAR Nationwide Series today up the highway and English Town, New Jersey. The Toyota NHRA Super Nationals qualifying coming up next at 4.30 Eastern on ESPN. The finals you can see over on ESPN2 tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern time. The Eyes on IndyCar Series is racing in Detroit at Belle Isle, presented by ShopAutoWeek.com. ABC tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern time. And this nationwide series has the weekend off next weekend. In a couple of weeks, it is the fast, fast, emphasize capital letters, exclamation point, fast, Michigan International Speedway on ABC at 3.30 Eastern time. Over 200 miles an hour into the corner on the fresh pavement there. It's going to be something to see. I heard some 217 miles an hour stuff getting into turn one at Michigan. That's how fast it is. New pavement really got those guys flying. Here at Dover, been a while since a driver had scored his first nationwide series win on the Monster Mile, something that was a pretty frequent occurrence for many years. Can Ryan Truex join that club today? He's going to have to hold off his teammates to do it. Ryan Scott is in second, and Joey Logano is in fourth, closing on Kurt Busch in third, and for the last, most of the last 10 laps, has been the fastest car on the racetrack until he's caught this pack. Yeah, but the problem he's got is he's too far behind, and those, those difference in lap times, not enough for him to make up the ground that he's behind. I think Truex is in a good position to win this thing if, the, if it stays green. I don't think Logano can make up that ground. Five of the last seven Dover races, last green flag run. How long was it? Seven laps or less. That's not good for Truex. But that's in five of seven. If it's the other two, then you get a long run and you and you celebrate. So, Alan, you think we're going to see another caution flag, huh? Well, odds are we will. Well, if we don't get one, this race is going to be over in about eight minutes. So yes, sir. You better not leave your couches, I can tell you that. <laughs> I think the, I'm sorry, Russ. No, I, I think the fact that Truex is so fast at this point in the race, that's why Logano made the pit stop. I don't think Logano would have pitted had he been able to stretch it like he had been. But when he looked at his mirror and saw Truex catching him on that last run before the caution came out, I think that's what made his decision to come in and work on the car and get tires. And it's all moved if he can't get around Kurt Busch anyway. Andy, you work with a lot of young drivers. How nervous do you think Ryan Truex is right now? <laughs> so he's pretty nervous, but he's handling it great. I mean, he's out there. He, just, he ran the second fastest lap on the track. Uh, next to Brian Scott actually ran the fastest. No, oh, he's got to run on here. 
Logano to the inside for third. We got 22 laps to go, and I got to tell you, 22 laps here at Dover goes by awful fast. Clear, shut the door on him. Go get the 11. 22 to go. And for Ryan to grab the pole position and his favorite racetrack with his entire family here, and him feeling like this is his Daytona 500, I will guarantee this guy is so nervous he can't see straight. He's nervous, but he's motivated. I think he's, he's making really good laps. He's staying very focused. How's he going to handle all these lap cars to the end of the race? He, he's got to stay driving the car hard because we saw what happened to Stenhouse. And, Alan, you and I had a conversation Going earlier about when a, driver, Two zero, when a driver tries to slow down too much, how it alters his mindset, alters how the car handles. So my opinion is keep doing, Man. Ryan, what you've been doing. He's wheeling it, though. Look at that. Saw yeah. that wheel. Busy, busy hands. think he's nervous. What do you think about Pop? There's Martin Truex Sr. <laughs> I bet he's nervous. Martin in the seafood business. Great guy to talk to. Always around the racetrack. <laughs> Dave, is he going to chew that bottle? <laughs> Maybe so. I did confirm before the race, down at the car on the grid, uh, Mr. Truex, uh, a little nervous about today? Oh, yeah, he said. You know, this is the baby boy, of course. Martin, older brother, has had big success, but this is younger brother, and uh, uh, both uh, dad, Martin, and mom, Linda, are here watching this take place. You know, earlier in the broadcast, I kept calling Ryan Martin because I'm so used to talking to Martin at the restaurant here at Dover Downs, and he's so nervous, he's trying to take a drink out of a bottle with the cap still on it, so, you know, he's upside down right now. Big, big deal. In this young man's career, this racetrack has been a lot as well. Martin, uh, Ryan rather, now you got me doing it. <laughs> Ryan won two NASCAR K&N East, K East Series championships, locked them both up here at Dover. Second place, teammates. Logano 18 trying to get around Scott in the 11. And by the way, nice job by Brian Scott today in this 11 car. Nice, nice job. Yeah, he did. He's on a very, very good race. His car's been solid under him all day. That's exactly what you need. I mean, yeah. when you're down in a hole, you just got to have a smooth race and say, hey, I can do this. I just did it for you. Watch me. All this going on, and even two seconds behind Ryan Truex. There's the leader. Here comes second. And Logano's going to have a look with some lap cars ahead. You have a true second lead. The 18 is past the 11 for second places. Oh, boy. Ooh. A lot of yellow cars in that shot. Yes. You know, if you're Ryan, you're his crew chief, his father, anybody like you, you're thinking, please, I don't need a caution. Please don't anybody wreck. Let this thing under green. Because, boy, if he gets a caution, this could be a whole different oh, race. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a different race. Logano's car is extremely fast at this point. This is for fifth and sixth place here. Elliott Sadler giving up a spot to Justin Allgaier. Other story of the day besides a potential first-time winner, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. involved in a crash. He was running second back at lap number 27. Lost the car off turn number two, piled into the inside wall. They spent 66 laps behind the wall getting repairs. Now the six car being black flagged by NASCAR for not meeting minimum speed. Right now, Stenhouse on pit road. He's 78 laps down in 32nd place. Sadler running in seventh. Each and every one of these lap cars that Ryan Truex catches now are going to make him grip that wheel a little tighter. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. He's just track. so Rhythm nervous right here. now. Rhythm. I want to give a shout out to Jeremy oh, Clements, here. who's been on the lead lap all day long, just got now got lapped. That 51 car, Jeremy's doing a great job today, guys. Had a terrific run. Yes. A little bit of a break. They were one of the last to pit on that. Remember that cycle of green flag pit stops we had where the caution came out just after? They played it perfectly. Yep. They had a good enough uh, gas mileage to make it work. You talk about Truex being nervous. He doesn't have time to be nervous. Watching that shot right there, he's busy. He is having to really wield this thing. He's done it all day. I, I remember earlier in the race, he was complaining about the car being loose, and, and it was. We, we could see it, but he was running it as fast as that time. 
Well, Andy, I'm never going to disagree with you, but I'm going to say he's got a little bit of space left in his brain to be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yo, that was close. Uh-oh. Yo, he says, I got to go. You saw what happened last time somebody held him up. They got spun out, didn't they? Nine laps to go. Can Logano chase down Truex? Will there be another caution flag? Well, that last uh -oh, time. Oh, hang on. Don't give it away. I to say that last time. He is loose. Can't fix it now, buddy. Hold on to it. Oh, man, he is out of control loose right now. He's got to use that racetrack, and He's got to get up there with some more grip. If it's the top of the track, go up there. Eight, four, and eight, settle eight, the car down oil. a bit. And his lap times have fell off. Here comes Logano in a hurry. He caught him about three tenths or more the last lap. Got to mm. smooth it out if he's going to be able to hold him off. Danica Patrick came out of the garage, made one slow lap on the apron, has gone back to the garage in the seven car. He ran almost identical times the last lap. Can he do it? It's going to be hard. At this point, I don't know that he's got a car that's able to, to run the lap times. Has to be overheating that right rear tire. Yeah, that car is really moving around. Ryan Truex's car is, and Logano, he is just on it right now. I mean, six laps to go is a long way around this racetrack as fast as Joey Logano is catching Truex. Uh, now he he's doesn't need this. Look out. Yeah, Look wrong out. That's time. trouble. Wow. Yeah, he did not Here need that. Logano. Killed him. They yep. killed him. Hang on. No. New leader, Joey Logano. Stay with them. Five to go. Stay with them. Ran up on two lap cars side by side. Had no place to go but out of the throttle. Unbelievable. Hey, yeah, that's a tough break right there. That's a tough way to lose that one. And all of these slower cars, and I'll bring back the other side of that slower car thing before when I, that we mentioned about the Logano incident earlier. They've got a responsibility to know the leaders are coming up behind them. They've got spotters on the roof of the grandstand. There's a little, a little courtesy has to go there, doesn't it? Well, no, I agree with you, uh, Alan. There's no doubt about that. But if you get to a slower car, you just don't run into them. So, I mean, I, the, the slower car needs to move out of the way, but if he doesn't, you don't need to run into him and cause a big wreck. So, hey, look, all these guys, they got to respect each other or else they're going to have problems. Here is third place, Brian Scott, trying to hang on and make it a Joe Gibbs Racing 1-2-3 sweep. Kurt Busch pressing him hard. Well, you got to feel bad for Ryan Truex. I would have bet anything I had he was going to win this race. Joey Logano was so far behind Ryan Truex at one point. Well, I think one thing is, is it's hard not for Ryan Truex not to overdrive the car. He has a loose car, and he's overdriving it a little bit because he knows this 18's coming, which doesn't do anything but aggravate his problem of being loose. But then the terrible now, break of catching those lap cars. One lap to go. Bring it home, bud. Bring it home. There's your, there's your stories of the day summed up in that one camera shot. The six all beaten up and off the pace, and the 18 out front leading. For Joey Logano, he's going to have led 154 of 200 laps. He's going to pick up another win at Dover. And Joe Gibbs Racing gets a one, two, three sweep. Logano wins it. Truex second. Brian Scott third. All time, buddy. About time we won here. Well, Joey Logano said. Car, by the way. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Joey Logano said this was a great racetrack. He loves this place. But he he really loves it. He hadn't won at Dover yet. Monster, baby. Woo! Yeah! He's happy now. Yeah, I think so. That was a great drive. And on the other side of that coin, heartbroken for the moment. Ryan Truex. Don't get down. No, he drove a good race too.
Your time's coming. Well, Shannon, it looked bleak for a bit, but they're going to celebrate this 18 team. They sure are, Adam Stevens. I just heard you say, golly. What was it like watching your driver come from seventh to first in just over 40 laps here at Dover? It was uh, gut-wrenching, to be honest. Um, I really expected more guys to come down pit road. We got boxed in a little bit on the restart. And Truex, I tell you, why he doesn't have a full-time ride, I'll never know. Uh, him and that Grime Stop uh, team and that 20 car were amazing all weekend. I'm proud of that kid. I'm proud of the job he's done every time he's gotten one of our cars. But, uh, you know, the Dollar General Toyota, we were the heat all day. And uh, Joey, he's the master of this place. And uh, just to come here and race uh, with the cars prepared by Doug and Reggie and the guys at the shop, um, it's a privilege, and uh, I enjoy it every week. No doubt. Great day for Joe Gibbs Racing. Guys? Now, Joey Logano celebrating his first win at Dover and his fourth Nationwide Series win of 2012. We'll talk with he and some of the other top finishers in a minute. The 5-Hour Energy 200 in the books for the NASCAR Nationwide Series at the Monster Mile. And a look at how it all turned out. Joey Logano with his fourth win of the year. He got it done. No doubt he had the fastest car throughout the day. Really feeling really bad for Ryan Truex. I thought the kid had it won. Yeah, how about Ty Dillon? Top 10, first time out. So a look at the top 10 finishers there. We'll call this next bit the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. We'll start with the victory part. Seems like just yesterday, an 18-year-old Joey Logano was making his very first nationwide start right here at Dover. And now you're in victory lane. I gotta ask you about that last run. I know you were really quiet on the radio. If we would have looked inside that car, what would we have seen you doing? It was a pretty intense moment in there <laughs> trying to uh, catch Ryan. Um, we came in, took four, and I was like, oh no, man, we just gave another one away here at Dover. But uh, Adam Stevens and the guys gave me one heck of a Dollar General car that uh, can work my way back up there and was uh, running hard but was somewhat patient with it. And um, Ryan got caught up with uh, with the lap traffic or whatever and I had a big run and I got on the outside and he got really loose there at the end of the run. So um, got to thank Dollar General, GameStop, Sport Clips, uh, you know, nationwide. Um, Dollar General on Monday, you can go 20% off uh, orders online So uh, for the win here. So that's something really cool too. So excited about this win here. It's. Uh, been a long time coming. I feel like I've, I've lost a lot of them here and been really close to winning them and never been able to win it. So uh, to finally get it, it just uh, means a lot. You had to come down pit road. You had to restart seventh. It was because of the contact with the 24. It happened right after that. What happened there? Uh, lap cars just not giving enough room to the leaders, not enough respect to the leaders out there. Uh, when you're trying to race for the lead, and, and the 20 was faster than me at that time. He was catching me, and uh, you don't have no time to waste. And uh, got underneath him in the center of the turn, and he just kept coming down. So um, not much we can do there. But uh, either way, we're back here in victory lane. Enjoy this one, Joey. Joey Logano in victory lane here at Dover. Dave? Well, Shannon, it's a very delicate thing to try to console a racer who has just lost what was seemingly won. Anybody made you feel better yet? You had a lot of family down here. Not really. Uh, and it's just frustrating, but it's a good day for Joe Gibbs Racing. One, two, three, right? One, two, three? Yeah, that's good. Uh, you know, Dollar General, Grind Boss, Toyota, everyone that puts this team together, you know, there's a reason, there's a reason why, uh, why we won this, why, you know, Joe Gibbs won this race today. All three cars in the top three. They're just the best team out here. And, I'm fortunate to be able to be on this team. You know, I wish it was more than seven times a year, but uh, hopefully we can do more. And I uh, just want to thank Grind Boss, um, Toyota, Nationwide Insurance, everybody. I'll get one eventually. It's just tough. Describe approaching that lap traffic, Ryan. What was going through your mind and maybe what should have happened differently? Well, I figured they'd both go outside because they're about 20 laps down each, three seconds slower. Um, I don't know if they had spotters or not, but to race each other in front of the leader like that, it's just, it's just not smart. Um, but I don't want to put anyone down, name any names or any of that nonsense. Um, probably could have picked a better way to get around him. And when Joey got outside me there, three and four, I just got, I just got loose. I almost wrecked it, but that run there, we'd been looser than we had been. And um, we were definitely running out of time. I think if I wouldn't have caught that lap tra traffic, we would have had him, but he had a better car, better tires. Um, so congratulations to him. Like I said, good day for Joe Gibbs Racing. Speed and skill, but today was not Ryan Truex's day. Alan? Well, uh, like I said before, 
hang in there you'll get one yeah he did a good job with that i tell you those lap cars could have given him a lot more respect especially in that situation that late in the race for those two lap cars to decide that is really heartbreaking i'm sure Terrific drive, though, by Ryan Truex to finish second today behind Joey Logano, who scored his fourth win of the year. We have more post-race coverage from the Monster Mile on the way. Logano is celebrating a win. While we've wrapped it up here in Dover today, reminder that the NBA on ESPN continues tomorrow night with Game 4 of the Eastern Conference Finals. Kia NBA Countdown starts at 7.30. Then at 8.30 Eastern, LeBron and the Heat taking on Paul Pierce and the Celtics. It's the Eastern Conference Finals tomorrow on ESPN, ESPN3, and live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Celtics with a big win at home on Friday night. 2-1 series lead for the Heat, heading to that Game 4 in Boston. While Joey Logano takes the photos after his win at the Monster Mile today, more post-race interviews. Stock? And now we began the day talking about what a hard luck year it had been for Brian Scott. But today, another great run, but and also a great finish. How about that? What does this great third-place finish do for you and for this race team? Well, first off, it's uh, it's a testament to everybody at Joe Gibbs Racing to bring home a 1-2-3 finish. This proves how hard they've been working all offseason, all year, and bringing really fast Toyotas to the racetrack. Uh, second, you know, it has been a tough year, and it feels really great to bring home a, a top five finish. One, two, three for Gibbs. Uh, everybody at Dollar General, you know, uh, the, all their partners, STP, Scott Products, uh, just everybody. Just really happy to bring home that finish for them. Uh, you got to thank Nationwide Insurance for, uh, for putting on this series, sponsoring it, and letting us go out there and, and run a fun race, hopefully put on a good race for the fans. And, uh, you know, I seem to always get these good finishes going into an off week. <laughs> so either we need more off weeks or uh, I need to figure out how to do better in the big string of things. Hey, well done. Good to see you smile. Thank you. Let's go to Mike. What a remarkable nationwide series debut for Ty Dillon. A top 10 finish. Did you expect to run that well in your first time out? You know, um, I knew I had the car and the right guys to do it with. I had an awesome pit crew and an awesome crew chief and Ernie Cope. And, uh, just uh, just had to put it all together and have a clean race, and that's what we did and came out eighth. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, i got to thank South Point Casino for, for helping us out and Nationwide Insurance for, for putting on such a, a great race. And I can't wait to be able to run in this series uh, full-time. I know it's coming soon, hopefully. And uh, just really excited and, and can't thank everybody enough. When is it coming? When is that full-time effort coming? I'm not sure. Uh, I'll leave that to my grandfather and, and let him make that choice. Congratulations. An eighth place finish for Ty Dillon in his first Nationwide Series start. All right, Mike, thanks. And uh, we've heard from three of the top five finishers. The other two had a somewhat extended conversation on pit road after climbing from their cars at the end of the race. Going back to some stuff that happened way back in the early parts of the race. Kurt Busch, who finished in fourth. Justin Allgaier, who finished in fifth. Kurt obviously looking to check to see what paint scuffs might be on the back bumper of the 31 car in order to further his point in the discussion. I think Kurt's trying to say, I barely touched you. And he's saying, no, you did touch me. Look. And that went on for a little bit before Kurt walked away, Dave. With Justin now, uh, a brief summary of what you and Kurt discussed? Uh, the weather. We, we discussed. <laughs> I doubt it. We discussed the changing of the weather. Now, we, uh, we just both fighting for the same real estate and uh, unfortunately both just agreed to disagree so um, overall it was a great day for the branch Chevy we uh, first top five in a while and uh, we had a strong car we just that last run we were just way too tight and struggled a little bit so hopefully we can carry this momentum uh, into the next couple races and they break their way into the top five in points for the 31 team as well dr. punch and Kurt Busch sitting here on pit road another top five finish for Kurt driving for brother Kyle and uh, and great top five, by the way. What happened with you? We just saw it with, with Justin Allgaier on the track and afterward. Uh, on the initial, initial start of the race, it was like, you know, packing air underneath somebody, and he got loose in front of us, and he thinks we purposely hit him. And so he drove like, a, you know what, all day to try to door us and try to do stupid things out on the track. And I'm on probation, so I can't even pick my nose the right way. But, you know, it's just a good day for us to finish in the top five with the Monster Energy car. I'm proud of it. We're working at it, and, uh, you know, from where we were in the beginning of the year to where we are now, we've made great steps moving forward. So, I don't know. There's, there's clowns that uh, want to play, and uh, we'll play. I've got no problem with it, but, you know, and then there's fans that will get on blog sites and Twitter tonight and just start talking a bunch of riffraff. All what it was was the initial start of the race. Race your car, kid. Race your car. That's all there is to it. It's called a race. That's what we're doing out here. We're racing. All right, guys. Kurt Busch. Alan? 
who just might have given us the quote of the day. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm on probation. I can't even pick my nose. Oh, come on. You know that was I funny. It. That was oh, pretty it was, good. It was I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three atop the scoreboard for Joe Gibbs Racing. A sweep here at the Monster Mile in Dover. Joey Logano coming out on top. Is that all guy? As the fans file out, say hello to Miles the Monster. We look ahead for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Next race, two weeks from today, on the extremely fast, recently resurfaced Michigan International Speedway. Then the road course at Road America, the mile and a half in Kentucky, and Daytona for halfway through the season. Join us at the track, nascar.com slash tickets, or the number at the bottom of the screen. As the race was still finishing up, Danica Patrick retired her car for the day, and Mike caught up with her then. And obviously a very disappointed Danica Patrick. Danica, close quarters racing there with Sam Hornish. What happened? I, I don't know. Um, I have to see the replay to know for sure. But you know, we were all we were all going gangbusters on the restart. Uh, they, the tires are so good, so you try and use them. And I was racing the car in front of me, and you know, the car behind me is racing me. So um, I'd have to see it to know. But more than anything, it was just kind of a bummer because I was just starting to get into the rhythm. I think. Uh, I struggled a lot at the beginning. The slower you go, the looser it is because the car is up and off the track. So um, once I finally just stopped using the brakes so much, I got going a little bit faster. But uh, it's just a bummer for bummer for the team. You know, I, I always hate to see them in the garage working their butts off like that. So um, I hate those I hate those fire drills. But and a bummer for GoDaddy. Would have liked to have get a nice result for them here. Uh, it was a bummer last time, but. At least it wasn't a blown right front. So uh, we'll, we'll learn from this and we'll come back better. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks. A tough ending to an otherwise promising day for Danica Patrick. All right, Mike Patrick will finish in 30th position on the day while Joey Logano shares a little moment. A family moment. Yeah, uh, that's four this year for Joey. Showing he can get it done behind the wheel here at Dover. Well, the Monster Mile certainly had an impact on the Nationwide Series Championship standings. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. led Elliott Sadler at the start of the day. Stenhouse Jr. finished 32nd. Sadler finished 7th. Elliott is your new championship leader. Heading into the Michigan race in a couple of weeks. Austin Dillon just 14 points back now in third, Mike. And another strong run for Austin Dillon. Just outside the top five today, sixth. How would you assess the afternoon? No, it was pretty good. Uh, track position was key. You know, Logano's car was unbelievably fast. Uh, he was able to get back up through there, but uh, we fought uh, a little bit tight there at the end. We kept tightening up. We're loose, 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 and then we got over the board on, on tightness. So uh, I was really proud of my guys. The American Ethanol New Holland Chevrolet was really fast, and uh, running up front all day, it was a good day. Uh, track position was just key, man. We needed to be a little bit farther forward to have a shot for the win, and uh, I want to thank all the guys uh, from Nationwide Insurance, Tag Heuer, and Bass Pro Shops for, for helping us get to where we are. And Ty had a great day, too, so it was a good uh, day for the Dillon. Yeah, I was going to ask you about Ty. Uh, you know, pretty good run for his debut. Top 10, finished eighth. I don't know if anybody expected that here. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a RCR cars have been great this year, and he got in it and did his job, and uh, very proud of him, and I finished ahead of him. <laughs> a little sibling rivalry already here amongst the Dillons. All right, Mike, thanks. So some final thoughts on today's 200 here at Dover, won by Joey Logano. What would you think there, Hall Well, Hammer? it was a great run out, everybody. No doubt about that. But the story today, me, had to be the Dillon boys. I mean, Austin Dillon and Ty and Ryan Truex. Those three, I was looking at all day long. They looked fantastic. I was proud of all of them. Yeah, it was a lot to it. I, the heartbreaker of the day had to be Ryan Truex. Mm -hmm. Had the lead, looked like he was going to get that first win with his family here. Didn't happen, but it was a really great drive by Ryan Truex. Uh, great performance. And, of course, the big turn in the championship story we talked about just a minute ago. Stenhouse Jr. running second early in the race and crashes off of turn number two. And Elliott Sadler able to take advantage, although maybe not to the extent that he would have liked as the series moves on from here to the two-mile Michigan International Speedway in a couple of weeks. So Joey Logano with his fourth win of the season in the NASCAR Nationwide Series today here in Dover, his first at the Monster Mile. And we remind you tomorrow, it's the Eyes on IndyCar Series at Belle Isle, presented by ShopAutoWeek.com over on ABC starting at 3.30 Eastern Time. And in a couple of weeks, ABC as well. 3.30 Eastern, Saturday the 16th, it's the Nationwide Series at the Michigan International Speedway. Toyota NHRA Super Nationals qualifying is next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.